Tonight's meeting of the Metropolitan National and Davidson County Council is coming to you live from the Davidson Room at the Music City Center and it's a public affairs presentation of the Metro National Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Nolan, your announcer for this program. Tonight, the 15th Metropolitan Council begins its second year in office, holding the 25th business meeting of a four-year term. It has conducted 18 business meetings during 2020 prior to tonight, along with one adjourned meeting. For the first time since April 6th, the council this evening will conduct its business in person. This comes after operating virtually for 15 straight meetings under emergency rules due to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. Due to those health concerns, the public was requested not to be present, and most of the 40 council members attended and participated online. All 40 members of the council, along with Vice Mayor Jim Schumann, were hoped to be present here tonight, along with staff and members, uh, along with members of the public. However, we understand that there are at least five members of the council tonight who will not be here due to COVID concerns. Three members are in quarantine, and two members either have had the virus or are recovering from it. Also, because of some absences due to the ongoing fall break here in Metro, maybe down to as few as 31 members tonight. You need 27 members of the council to have a quorum to begin business and keep business throughout. Um, by the way, the music, the Davidson Room here at the Music City Center is large enough to accommodate the size crowd we expect for tonight's meeting and still maintain social distancing, which is required by city health orders. These orders include everyone wearing a mask since we are in a metro building. This will be the council meeting site for both tonight and for the October 20th council meeting. Could well be the site for the rest of this year. It's only the third time that I'm aware of in the past 45 years the council has met in its own chamber, not met in its own chambers on, on the second floor of the Metro Courthouse. At those times in 1975 and in 2003, the council chambers or the entire courthouse were undergoing renovation. The council also has a new, a new format for its printed agenda tonight, which you'll find on the city's website. It includes more legislative history on each bill. Therefore, the council agenda tonight is 34, 39 pages long with a total of 131 items up for consideration. That includes 12 appointments and reappointments of local citizens to Metro boards and commissions, along with 19 resolutions and ordinances up for public hearing, 37 resolutions, 36 first reading bills, nine bills on second reading, and 14 ordinances on third and final reading. There will again be, there was expected to be debate tonight on Metro charter amendments again, but the Councilman Steve Glover is one of those who will not be present tonight. So his amendments that are on the agenda will be deferred and probably will not be considered in the future since the committee that heard the matter this afternoon has decided to indefinitely defer at least to recommend that. Um, several council members will also be looking at the, considering uh, amendments tonight regarding the, the council will be considering legislation tonight regarding to the pandemic. One is a resolution, RS 2025-46, would appropriate $32.1 million in the city's fires relief federal CARES Act money. Funding will be allocated to several metro departments for the following uses, staffing and temporary labor, $24.8 million hazardous pay for critical infrastructure employees, $20 million. Lab costs, almost $12 million. PBE and other safety supplies, $7.7 million. Interest costs, $2.6 million. Technology and remote work, $1.5 million. And at risk and outreach and communication work for the health department, $1.4 million. Also, there are some adjustments for a FEMA claim for COVID-related expenses of $20 million and adjustment for amounts already previously uh, appropriated back in June of $16.7 million. If those are all approved tonight, the city will have allocated 94.3 million of the 121 million it has in CARES Act funds. A similar CARES Act resolution was also supposed to be considered again tonight, but there was one Councilman Jonathan Hall was sponsoring. He will not be here either, so that's also going to be deferred again. There are two resolutions that would seek to change um, some of the uh, guidelines and language in some of the earlier approved uh, CARES Act appropriation. One would clarify language concerning what national music venues are eligible for help. Another resolution would expand eligibility verification requirements for small businesses to receive aid. There was also a, a resolution tonight from Councilman Glover that will be deferred. It requested the Metropolitan Board of Education to reopen all schools immediately following the school system's fall break. It reopens on Monday, so it's uh, unlikely the bill will be heard tonight or have any impact on what's going forward. The school system at this time begins with the youngest classes begin to come back uh, after fall break, but the high school's not beginning until probably until the end of early next year. Another virus related bill on third reading uh, would say that after a state of emergency is declared, the mayor is authorized by a written order to appoint employees of any metropolitan de government department to assist in the enforcement of the orders issued by the chief medical director, including other limitations that might be involved or citations involved. There's been increasing concerns in the council about the breadth and scope of the bill. It was deferred at the last meeting three weeks ago, so the Cooper administration could be crafting further changes for it when it comes up on third reading tonight. Finally, on third reading bill BL 2022 426 is an ordinance that would create an extension for more funding of for the existing property tax relief program. All persons who qualify for state property tax relief 
and whose income does not exceed a state mandated cap of $30,700 annually are eligible. You can contact the Metro Trustee's Office for more details. This year, funding for the program has been increased from $3.9 million to almost $5.2 if you want to follow tonight's council meeting as it progresses, you can find the agenda online as well as a council staff analysis with explanations of the legislation. Just go to the Metro Council portion of the Nashville.gov website, then on to the Legislative Information Center. We'll also be placing the bill numbers of each bill on the screen when they come up for consideration so you can follow along and keep up with where we are on the meeting agenda. Let's go down to Vice Mayor Jim Schulman. He'll be gaveling tonight's council meeting to order shortly. Will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, October 6, 2020. Welcome back, members of the Metropolitan Council. It's nice to see you all. So will all members of the Council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, for this evening's invocation, please welcome District 20 resident and the Director of Music at Nashville Classical, which is a K-8 Tennessee Reward School in East Nashville, Marisa Frank, as well as Tamika Nicole and Bethany Bailey. Uh, Tamika Nicole, you may recognize as one of the official anthem singers for our own Nashville Predators. So while this evening's selection was originally written by Ms. Frank as a message to one of her students, it is hoped that it can be an encouragement to all of us. They are the guests tonight of Council Member Mary Carolyn Roberts. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor, and especially thank you, Councilwoman Roberts, for your invitation this evening. It's a true honor to be here tonight. The song we're about to share was inspired by the words of a seven-year-old little girl that is a part of a songwriting unit in my music class, wrote about how she was ashamed for anyone to know her true life story. And at times, she felt like it was so difficult she didn't know how to go on. I wrote this song with her as a reminder that even when times are trying, joy is right around the corner, and that our unique story is one we should always be proud to tell. With all the challenges we're facing in our world and in our communities, my hope tonight is that these words can be an inspiration for us all. This is called Your Story. Yes, things might have happened that make you confused, make you want to tell lies to cover who you are inside. You might want to go back. Erase what is true. Paint a new picture. Something better and new. But don't you shouldn't write your 
Thank you all so much. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Y'all may be seated. Thank you. So without objection, we will suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for adoption of the minutes? Uh, September 15, 2020, I heard a motion properly seconded. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? No, Vice Mayor, there are no messages from the mayor. There are no messages from the mayor, but um, the mayor was in the back just a minute ago. He is still there, Mr. Mayor. Uh, welcome to the uh, Metro Council and um, to the Music City Center. We're glad you're here. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Council Member Johnston, I believe uh, we'll start with you. You're recognized for a motion on the rules. Council Member Johnston? 
Uh, okay, hold there, on. Just there we go. There we go. I move that the Metropolitan Council rescind the temporary emergency council rules of procedure approved on March 17th, 2020, and as amended on April 7th and May 19th, effective immediately. All right, you've heard the motion. Is there a second? Okay, here a second. Any discussion on the motion to go ahead and, and um, end the emergency rules? Seeing none, you just have to hang with me for a little bit. These are all new machines. Uh, I see nobody in the queue. We're ready to vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Thank you, Councilmember Johnston. Now that I know where you are. There we go. So um, a couple of announcements as we start. Um, I would say that um, we lost uh, two former council members over the last several weeks since the last council meeting. We want to express our condolences to the families of both former council member Tony Tenpenny and former council member Rip Ryman. Uh, we are um, sorry um, uh, for that loss, for both those losses, um, both former members of the Metro Council. I do want to thank, and I think we all need to thank, Charles Starks and the staff of the Music City Center for letting us use this wonderful space and the parking as well tonight. It allowed us to come back together and practice proper social distancing. Um, it is um, amazing, what an amazing job they did to get this all together. Mr. Starks, are you in the room? There he is, he's all the way in the back. Thank you and your staff so much for letting us use these facilities. You know what? <clears throat> uh, it's, it's, first of all, nice to have all the council members back under one uh, roof. And second of all, I think it gives everybody much hope that um, we have tremendous, wonderful space at the Music City Center. And maybe this is the start of really good things to come. So um, anyway, Mr. Starks, your staff, thank you so much for doing this. I uh, also want to give big thanks to the Metro IT department who got all the technology together so that we could meet here tonight. So thank you. <laughs> and also our own Metro Council staff and the clerk staff who also have put in a tremendous amount of time to get this thing together. So a couple of things. Uh, please wear your mask in this facility. Uh, remember to practice proper social distancing. If you need to speak, uh, there are various microphones located around the room. Uh, you will just need to pick one. Uh, please don't touch um, the podium or the mic if you can help it. If you do, there are disinfectant wipes around that you can clean. And um, again, because um, this is all new, um, I have to find you to be able to turn your microphone on. So I know, I see where Councilmember Johnston is. She is in the right place because elections and confirmations are coming up, so I'll know where she is um, when it's time for her to speak. Um, a couple of other things before we get started. You should notice in your amendments packet, suggested rule change by Council Member Henderson. Uh, that will be up for review at the next council meeting. Correct, Mr. Cooper? That's correct. Um, last week, you were supposed to have completed your utility board training through the Comptroller's office. Um, uh, Ms. Rose Hayes of our office knows who you are that didn't do it, so she will be reaching out to you if you haven't, along with any other trainings that you might need to take, all right? So just be aware. Um, now, so like last year, I will tell you that we had several study committees that we had, if you remember, I think we had eight. The 37208 committee, which is chaired by Council Member Taylor, is still functioning. Um, we have, obviously, as you know, uh, serious fiscal issues before us that you as council members are going to need to focus on. Uh, very serious fiscal issues that are going to take up a tremendous amount of your time over the next several months. But we also have a responsibility to keep focused on other city issues as well. So uh, first, after the actions taken at the last council meeting, I will be appointing a special committee to review council benefits. As you may remember, that measure was deferred at the last meeting until March. Uh, if you're interested in serving on that committee, uh, please let me know. There are also five special committees that I'm interested in creating uh, in this, the second year of the council. Again, last year we had eight. Uh, like last year, they will be made up of both council members and citizens. If you're interested in serving, please let me know. 
Um, I'm going to quickly run through the five and then we will send them to you. I will let you know that these primarily came from citizens over the last several months who asked us to take a look at these as the Metro Council. Number one, how do we utilize or better utilize current data on individuals coming through the prison system to determine how future funding could be directed, redirected to help address the systemic needs of our communities? Repeat that again. How do we utilize or better utilize current data on individuals coming through the prison system <clears throat> to determine how future funding could be directed, redirected to help address the systemic needs of our communities? Number two, our nation, as you know, is terribly divided. How do we create civil conversations that include everyone, especially those with whom we do not agree, to find common ground to help the least of us? How do we reach those who do not have a voice? Number three, public safety is one of the most important things that government does. What can we do and what are other cities successfully doing that, improve, that could improve Nashville's public safety? Number four, strategic plans have shown to work with many organizations. How do we design a system where every Metro department creates a five-year plan that is updated on a continual basis? Okay, and that would be working in conjunction with the finance department, because I believe they're working on something similar to that. And the last one, number five, the experiences of a child's first three years of life have a tremendous impact on brain development. Dispar disparities in affordability and accessibility of quality child care in Nashville contribute to the widening opportunity gap we see in our city and across the country. Understanding the current financial constraints that the city is under, is there a way to develop a network of early education centers in child care deserts using existing underutilized locations in Nashville, such as churches with childcare rooms used only on Sundays to serve low-income families at no cost. So those five issues were given to me uh, in part by citizens in Nashville who are concerned about certain things that are going on and would like us to take a look. We will send these questions out and we will start appointing council members who are interested in serving on these uh, committees. If you're interested, let me know. And if you know of citizens who are interested in these topics, please let me know that as well. Uh, one last thing. We have two vacancies on the Health and Educational Facilities Board, which pursuant to state law is to be filled by the Metropolitan Council. I believe you may have a notice on your desk. This vacancy is the result of the expiration of the terms of Mr. Richard L. Brown and Mr. Robert Perry on September 30th, 2020. Each individual selected will serve a six-year term, <clears throat> which will expire on September 30th, 2026. Procedure for filling this vacancy is set forth in Council Rule Number 50. Time frame for this process will be as follows. Members of the Council will be called on to make nominations at the next regular Council meeting on October 20th, 2020 to fill the vacant seat. Nominees must complete a questionnaire and submit it to the clerk no later than noon on Thursday, October 29th, 2020. Any nominee, nominee who fails to submit a questionnaire to the clerk by this deadline shall be deemed to have drawn his or her name from nomination. <clears throat> Nominees will be notified to meet with the Council Rules uh, Committee on Thursday, November 5th, 2020. <coughs> Excuse me, an election to fill a seat will be conducted at the Council meeting on that evening. Any nominee who fails to appear before the Rules Committee on November the 5th shall be deemed to have withdrawn his or her name from nomination. I believe, again, that you have that memorandum on your desk. If there are any questions, uh, you can reach out to Mr. John Cooper of our staff. So we are now ready to proceed to elections and confirmations. Um, Councilmember Johnston, is there a report from the Rules Committee? The, there we go. Yep. Um, yes, we uh, rules, uh, elections and confirmations reviewed a number of appointments and reappointments. There were several um, that were unable to attend today, and so those will be deferred. Um, they are the appointment of Ms. Fatima Ali for a term expiring February 2nd, 2023 for the Action Commission. Ms. Gina Emanuel for a term expiring September 17th, 2025 for the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission. 
Mr. Shannon Sanders for a term expiring June 30th, 2023 for the Tourism and Convention Commission, Ms. Sue Palmer, uh, Ms. Jessica Powell, and Ms. Mona Lisa Warren for a reappointment uh, term expiring October 10th, 2022 for the Transportation Licensing Commission. Um, those will be deferred for one meeting, meeting so I move for approval uh, of a deferral for one meeting. So the motion is to defer those six uh, applications for one meeting. That's a motion properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of the deferral for those individuals for one meeting, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the, uh, the motion passes. Uh, back to you, Council Member Johnston. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, there were several that were in attendance, and so we took this on consent uh, to expedite the meeting. Um, that's the appointment of Mr. Kevin Warner for a term expiring March 6, 2022 for the Action Commission, the reappointment of Mr. John Landers for a term expiring June 30, 2023 for the Auditorium Commission, the appointment of, of Ms. Nora Bykstra for a term expiring September 30th, 2024 for the Convention Center Authority, the reappointment of Ms. Kay Bowers for a term expiring November 5th, 2025 for the Metropolitan Deve Development and Housing Agency, the appointment of Ms. Mary Griffin for a term expiring July 18th, 2025 for the Transit Authority, and Mr. Patrick McNally, a reappointment for a term expiring October 10th, 2022 for the Transportation Licensing Commission, and I would move approval. All right, so you've heard the motion, properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing nobody in the queue, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. So we have got, um, Councilmember Johnson, let me make sure I've got this right. For the Action Commission, the appointment of Mr. Kevin Warner. For the Auditorium Commission, the reappointment of Mr. John Landers. For the Convention Center Authority, the appointment of Ms. Nora Bykstra. Uh, for the Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency, the reappointment of Ms. Kay Bowers. And for the Transit Authority, the appointment of Ms. Mary Griffin. And for the Transportation Licensing Commission, the reappointment of Mr. Patrick McNally, correct? Correct. All right. Um, so um, if I can get these individuals to stand, now that I've gotten it all confirmed, Mr. Kevin Warner, if you'll stand and remain standing. There he is. Uh, Mr. John Landers. Ms. Nora Bykstra. Ms. Kay Bowers. I see Kay back there. There she is. She's back behind the camera. All right. Uh, Miss Mary Griffin and Mr. Patrick McNally. All right. So we are so appreciative of the fact uh, that you are willing to serve and volunteer your time and expertise to help Nashville and Davidson County. Thank you all very, very much. Appreciate it. You are welcome to stay and stay with us, or um, you can leave if you'd like, all right? Okay, so we are now ready for um, um, resolutions on public hearing and also the bills on public hearing. This is how this works. So um, I'm going to call up. We have one resolution tonight. If you've gotten a copy of the agenda, it's item number 13. We have one resolution on public hearing. And then we have a number of bills on, um, on, um, under bills on public hearing. So what I will do is I'll call up the resolution first. And then um, I will start calling up the bills one at a time and then refer to the bill sponsor or the resolution sponsor. Unless the sponsor moves to defer the public hearing, the sponsor will call for a public hearing. I will then ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor of the resolution or the bill. And then I will ask for a show of hands for those who are here in opposition to either the resolution or the bill. If you are in favor and wish to speak on the bill, I will ask you to come forward. There's a microphone and a podium in the back. Introduce yourself and give us your address, and then you will have two minutes in which to speak. We have a timer over here next to the clerk's office that we can watch the time. And we will interrupt you at some point right after the two minutes and tell you your time is up. 
Um, I will then do that for anyone who is opposed who wishes to speak. Again, we will call these resolutions and the bills up one at a time. You can keep up with it on your calendar, on your agenda. Um, when your bill is called up, I will initially go to the sponsor, ask them if they want to have a public hearing. If they, will, if they do, I will then proceed to uh, declare the public hearing open. I'll ask for a show of hands of those who are in favor, a show of hands of those who are opposed, and then I will start calling people up to speak. All right? So we are ready to go. The, um, the first measure up is uh, resolutions on public hearing. Um, it's RS 2025-45 by Councilmember Taylor. It's a resolution exempting 911D 19th Avenue North from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a short-term rental property not owner-occupied permit pursuant to Section 17.16.070U of the Metropolitan Code. And you are at, I think I got that right. Councilmember Taylor, you're recognized. Mr. Vice Mayor, okay. I would like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, so Council Member Taylor has uh, uh, moved to open up the public hearing. I declare the public hearing open. Can I see a show of hands? Actually, we've got a, a committee report first, right? Okay, let me get the committee report, report first. Council Member Taylor, let me go back to you. Yes. Uh, codes, uh, and I believe, let's see, you are at podium number 10. No, you're not. You're at podium number nine. Council member um, Cash, you're recognized. The uh, Codes Fair and Farmers Market Committee voted to approve eight in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, council member. Okay, council member Taylor, back to you. Council member Taylor has requested that, council member Taylor has requested that we have a public hearing. So I declare the public hearing open. Can I see a show of hands of those people who are here in favor of this resolution? I see one hand in the back. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the resolution. Okay, we have hands on both sides. Uh, those in favor wish to speak. If you do, if you will come on up to the, to the um, podium. And what I will need is your um, name and address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. All right? Sir, you're recognized. Let me make sure your microphone is on. It should be. It's on. Uh, my name is Duran Jenkins. Uh, I am the owner of 911D 19th Avenue North. Um, I'm also the owner of 911A, B, and C as well. Um, I um, had short-term rentals on these other three properties previously. Um, and I was using the, the 911D unit as uh, an office slash uh, I stayed there sometimes as well. Um, and so in the interim of doing that, the bill had passed to um, where it was the 100 feet from a school. And the actual measurement is about 95 feet away from, I think it's uh, Meharry, uh, the medical college. So, um, you know, it, it really, um, it's an odd situation, uh, but I asked the, uh, the committee to uh, seriously consider that. All right, thank you. Anybody else in favor wish to speak on this resolution? All right, um, those opposed, if you would, please come on up and um, come on up, uh, come up to the podium. Um, sir, um, we probably need to clean off the uh, mic. I'm not sure if he touched it or not. You've got your mask on. Yes. Okay. All right. So um, if you would, if you would give us your name, address, and then you've got two minutes in which to speak. Uh, my name is Carl Meyer. I live at 2407 Hyman Street in North Nashville. I am the uh, co-owner joint owner with my partner, Pam Bezia, who is here, of a house at 1827 Morena Street, which is about one block from this uh, property. Uh, through our intentional community that we have, Nashville Greenlands, Pam and I have helped to finance and to restore eight vacant houses in North Nashville over the last 22 years. Uh, and all of which 
of those houses are presently used for highly affordable long-term housing for a total of 23 people. There is an urgent need for more affordable housing, rental housing, especially in North Nashville. Meanwhile, many hotels in Nashville are only partially booked at present. It is unthinkable to permit residential properties potentially available for long-term rental in our neighborhood or anywhere in Nashville to be converted to low-cost hotel accommodations for tourists, merely to generate higher profits for non-resident owners. Non-resident owners can still make money with long-term rentals. Investors are coming from all over the country to buy up our houses for long-term rentals in Nashville. So we are uh, strongly opposed to the approval of this resolution. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak in opposition? All right, seeing none, declare the uh, public hearing closed. Council Member Taylor, you are recognized. You recognized. Oh, wait a minute, you're in the one in front of it? Yes. Quit changing the microphones. <laughs> All right, we're here. All right, Thank you're you. recognized. So colleagues, I have introduced this resolution. Um, one of the main reasons that I've introduced this resolution to pass uh, tonight um, is that when, when the bill was passed for uh, 100 feet from a school, uh, when I looked into this, that school happened to be Meharry Medical College, which is a postgraduate professional school um, and uh, I feel very comfortable uh, for this uh, property to be uh, uh, listed as a, a, a short-term rental, um, with it being so close again to Meharry as a postgraduate school. So I'd ask for you to uh, support this um, as we move forward. Thank you. All right, thank you. So you want a motion to approve? Motion to approve, thank All you. All right, so Council Member Taylor has moved to approve this resolution. Uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on the uh, resolution? All right, seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All right, so um, let me explain what's going on with this. Um, so on a resolution like this, it needs 21 affirmative votes to pass. So we are going to, um, we're going to have you vote, all right? So Madam Clerk, um, let me make sure I've got all this right. I'm going to come to you, open up your microphone. So are you ready to take a vote? Yes, I'm going to configure the machines, Vice Mayor. All right. So we are, um, we're getting ready. All this, for those of you watching at home, all this stuff is new to us, so we're making sure that we do this right. Again, we are voting on Resolution RS 202545 by Council Member Taylor. Um, <clears throat> it will need 21 affirmative votes on the board to um, be passed. And Madam Clerk, you tell me when you're ready. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm able to open the machines anytime you instruct. All right. So again, um, if um, if you're if in favor of resolution or as 2025-45, you'd vote aye. Uh, if you're opposed, you'd vote no. Madam Clerk, open up the machines. Madam Clerk, we can't see the vote, so you tell me when everybody's in, and I'll close the vote. Vice Mayor, all but one member has voted. Um, 
just to ensure that the machines are working properly, may I ask um, this member whether they wish to vote at this time? Certainly. Um, Council Member Murphy, do you wish to vote at this time? Okay. So our first glitch, we're checking your machine. Okay. If you would please uh, instruct me how you'd like to vote, I'd be happy to enter your vote from here. Okay. Hold on, Council Member Murphy. You're at podium number... Yeah. Councilmember Murphy, oh, wait a minute, you're not at, uh, you're at number nine. Okay, you're recognized. The vote's been entered, Vice Mayor. Okay. All right, everybody in? Madam Clerk, close the machine, tell us the vote. There are 23 votes in favor, seven against. Okay, the vote is 23-4-7 against. Uh, resolution 2020-545 passes. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. All right, so we are now ready for bills on public hearing. Uh, we're on BL 2020-256 by Council Member O'Connell and Murphy. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by making applicable the provisions of a historic preservation overlay district to various properties located along Clinton Street from 16th Avenue North to 12th Avenue North. Council Member Murphy, you are at number nine. You are recognized. Council Member Murphy. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to defer the public hearing and defer this to the first meeting in November. All right, so the motion is to, de to uh, defer, not have a public hearing tonight, is to defer the public hearing and move the bill to the first meeting in November. That's the motion, properly seconded. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on the deferral motion. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion to defer passes. Thank you, Councilmember Murphy. We're now on item number 15. This is on page three of your agenda. This is BL 2020-405 by Councilmember Sledge. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code pertaining to dumpsters and other trash receptacles. Councilmember Sledge, you are recognized at podium number nine. Councilmember Sledge. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I'd ask to open the public hearing, please. All right, so Councilmember Sledge has requested the public hearing, declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. Don't see anyone. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Seeing nobody on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor, I move approval. Okay, so Council Member Sledge has moved approval of this bill on uh, public hearing, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the bill on second reading, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on second reading, Bill 2020-405. Thank you, Council Member Sledge. We're on BL 2020-417 by Council Member Taylor, an ordinance to amend Title 17 uh, by changing from MUIA to SB zoning for properties located at 1709, 1711, 1715, 1717, and 1719 Hay Street, southeast corner of 18th Avenue North and Hay Street. Council Member Taylor, hold on just a second. I'm getting better at this. You're at, counts, at podium six. You're recognized. Thank you, I'd like to open the public hearing. All right, so uh, Council Member Taylor has moved to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. Can I see a show of hands of those who are here in favor of this bill? Anybody here in favor, show of hands. Okay, seeing none, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this bill. All right, I see no one here uh, on either side. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Taylor, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move for approval. All right, so Council Member Taylor has moved for approval on 2024-17, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve, 417, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion is adopted by Council Member Taylor on 2024-17. We're on BL 2024-18. This is number 17 on your agenda. We're still on page three. Council Member Hall, 
ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from SP and RS 15 to SP zoning for properties located at 4269 Ashland City Highway and Ashland City Highway unnumbered. And I believe Council Member Hall is not here. All right, and no one else signed on to the bill, so it will be deferred to the first meeting in November, to the first public hearing in November. All right, bill automatically goes to the first meeting in November. <clears throat> We're on item number 18. This is on page four. This is Bill 2020-419 by Council Member Welsh, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing RS5 to RM20A NS zoning for properties located at 327 and 331 Whitsett Road. It's approximately 150 feet east of Nolensville Road. It's 0.53 acres. And Council Member Welsh, you are at podium number five. There you go, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would like to uh, open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of here are those who are here in favor of this bill. Anybody here in favor of this measure? All right, seeing none. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Welsh, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move to approve. Okay, Council Member Welsh has moved to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the bill on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the bill passes on second reading. Thank you, Council Member Welsh. Uh, we're on number 19, Bill 2020-435 by Council Member Sledge and O'Connell. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code by extending the urban zoning overlay district for various properties located along Murfreesboro Pike from Donaldson Street to Interstate 24 north of Woody Crest Avenue. Uh, Council Member Sledge, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd ask to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. Okay, I see a hand in the back. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. All right, those in favor wish to speak. Sir, do you wish to speak? Or are you good? You're, I, see a, I see a good sign. There you go. Thank you. So uh, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I move for approval with a very brief comment. All right. Council Member Sledge has moved for approval on second reading properly. Seconded back to Council Member Sledge uh, for a uh, brief uh, Thank discussion. you, Vice Mayor. This obviously is a fairly, you can see this fairly large parcel count, and the Council Member O'Connell is on this as well. This expands, as it says in the uh, uh, in the summary, expands the UZO down Murfreesboro Pike. This brings Murfreesboro Pike um, in the areas in District 17 and 19 in line with the other pikes um, in the county in the UZO, um, and this will allow uh, those properties to take advantage of the uh, parking minimums that we uh, took care of earlier this year. So with that, I would renew my motion. Okay, Council Member Sledge has renewed his motion. Again, it was properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on the motion. All those in favor of the motion on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes on second reading on BL 2024-35. Now on BL 2024-36 by Council Member Rutherford, ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing a specific plan for property located at Nolensville Pike unnumbered and a portion of property located at Nolensville Pike unnumbered at the southeast corner of Burkett Road and Nolensville Pike to add 1.51 acres currently zoned A or 2A within a corridor design overlay district. Council Member Rutherford, you are at podium number three. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I wish to open the public hearing. Okay, so uh, Council Member Rutherford has moved to open the public hearing, declare it open. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. All right, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. I see one hand in the back. Uh, would you like to speak? If so, come on up. Uh, you'll be at this podium. And I'll need your uh, name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. My name is Darcy Green. I live at 4312 Bonds Cove Drive. And I am here for several reasons this evening, but this particular on Nolansville at Burkett is a disaster. 
Uh, the area is already completely overcrowded. Traffic is absolutely insane. Um, there's overcrowding over, you all have approved far too many residential, multiple residential places, apartments, things like this. You've got to do something to slow down the growth in specific areas so that the city continues to be a fun and manageable place to live. You all have to start thinking about the people that already live here and not about the money that you're gonna make from developments, which we're losing anyways because people are leaving like they're leaving New York and California because of these proposed taxes, mask mandates, and corona lockdowns. This is getting ridiculous. You all need to start speaking for the people that you represent, which you're not doing. It's a disgrace. All right, thank you for coming. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak in opposition to this measure? Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Rutherford, I'm coming back to you. All right, you're recognized. Councilmember Rutherford. Uh, yes, I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. Okay, so Councilmember um, Rutherford has moved approval properly seconded. You do have a substitute. Uh, yes, I'd like to move the substitute, please. Okay. So Councilmember Rutherford has moved the substitute, again, properly seconded. Do you wish to explain what the substitute does? Or I can refer to Mr. Cooper. Uh, refer to Mr. Cooper. All right. Hold on just a second. Mr. I believe Cooper. it just changes out the uh, SP plan, updates the SP plan. Um, I'm looking over to the planning table to see if that's accurate. Yes, it adds some conditions to the plan. Okay. Or to, yes. Okay. All right, uh, you are back to um, Council Member Rutherford. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this basically adds a small parcel to an already approved um, project there in the area. So th this isn't really a new project per se. Um, so it's not adding anything additional uh, to the area than what's already there. And I would point out that in terms of the concerns raised, um, there is a, a long range plan uh, that's already in work in the, in the works uh, by the state of Tennessee DOT. Uh, expanding Nolensville Road through the area, which is going to vastly improve the traffic in the area. And so with that, I renew my motion to move approval. Okay, so um, Councilman Rutherford has moved approval of his substitute. Again, it was properly seconded. Uh, any questions about the substitute? All right, seeing none, we're voting on the sub... Uh, Ma'am, you've already spoken, so um, public hearing has been closed. Uh, we are now on a, uh, the substitute motion. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to substitute, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. A substitute passes. Councilman Rutherford, we're back on your bill now as substituted. You're recognized. I move approval. Okay, so Councilman Rutherford has moved approval. That's got a proper seconded. Um, any, um, any discussion on the motion? Again, this bill is on second reading. So the motion is to approve on second reading. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the bill as substitute passes on second reading. Thank you, Council Member Rutherford. Thank you. We're now on BL 2020-437 by Council Member O'Connell and Murphy. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 uh, by changing from IR to SP zoning for properties located at 1217, 1221, 1225, 1227, 1229, and 1231 Second Avenue North, the southwest corner of Second Avenue North, and Monroe Street. And Councilmember Murphy, you are at podium number nine. You're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to uh, move to open the public hearing. Okay, so uh, declare the public hearing open. Uh, could I see a show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure? I see one hand in the back. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Uh, those in favor wish to speak? Okay. So I declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Murphy, back to you. Thank you. I'd like to move approval. 
Okay, so Councilor Murphy has moved approval of um, BL 2020 properly seconded. Councilor Murphy, there actually is an amendment in here. Um, it can go on later if you want, or. Um, I'll go ahead and move the amendment. Okay, so let's get the amendment on first. Um, Councilman Murphy has moved the amendment uh, properly seconded. Do you want Mr. Cooper to explain the amendment? Sure. Okay, Mr. Cooper, you recognize. The amendment swaps out the plans with some updated plans. Okay. Uh, I, I think that should cover the summary, That's and a, with that, I'd like to move approval again. All right, so Councilman. Councilmember Murphy has moved uh, this very important amendment, which just changes out plans, properly seconded. Um, any discussion on that? Seeing none. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment's adopted. Now, Councilmember Murphy, you're on your bill as amended. I'd like to uh, renew my motion. Okay, so this is to pass the bill on second reading. Um, this is tw uh, Bill 2020-437 as amended. Uh, proper motion, proper second. Any discussion on that bill? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill passes on second reading as amended. Thank you, Councilmember Murphy. We're on VL 2020-438 by Councilmember Withers. This is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a historic preservation overlay district on a portion of property located at 701 South 6th Street, approximately 390 feet southeast of Sylvan Street Zone SP and within the Casey Redevelopment District overlay. Um, Council Member Withers, there you are. You're at the right podium. You're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All right, so Council Member Withers has moved to open up the public hearing, declare the public hearing open. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. I see one hand. All right, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Seeing nobody in opposition, those in the individual in favor wish to speak? And the, I saw the head shake no, so I declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Withers, you're recognized on your bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I actually need to move a substitute. Okay, Councilmember Withers has the substitute. He moves the substitute properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the substitute. The substitute uh, corrects terminology. Instead of a historic preservation overlay district, uh, it would actually be a historic landmark overlay district for that property. And if I may, just this address is the uh, Gerald Nicely building or the NDHA headquarters building. So that's the building that we're applying it to. And we're only applying the landmark, obviously, to that historic structure as we proceed with redevelopment of the rest of the Casey campus. But I appreciate NDHA and working with us on that. All right. Thank and you, Council Member Withers. Uh, again, I've got a proper second. Any discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, we're voting on the substitute. All in favor of the substitute say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, substitute passes. Uh, Council Member Withers, you were back on your bill, BL 2020 438, as substituted. I'd like to renew my motion to approve as substituted. All right. So, Council Member Withers has moved to approve his bill as substituted. Again, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill as substituted? Seeing none, we're voting on 2024-38 as substituted. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes BL 2024-38 as substitute passes on second reading. Uh, we're on item number 23. This is BL 2024-39 by Council Member Parker. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from SP to R6A zoning for properties located at 900, 902, 904, 906, 908, 910, 912, 914, and 916 North 6th Street, northwest corner of Cleveland Street and North 6th Street. It's 1.75 acres. Council, Council Member Parker, you're up close. Uh, you recognized. There you go. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. All right. Um, I declare the public hearing open. We're on Bill 2024-39. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this matter. All right. Well, I see a hand. There I see. I see a hand in the back. All right. So I've got one individual in favor. Uh, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Councilmember Parker, I don't see anybody back there. So I got one hand in favor. Sir, do you wish to speak? Okay. So uh, declare the public hearing closed. Uh, Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. 
Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval. Okay. So Councilman Parker has moved for approval of Bill 2020-439, properly seconded. Any discussion on this measure? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the bill, Bill 2020-439, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill passes on second reading. Thank you, Councilmember Parker. Uh, we're now on item number 24, BL 2020 by Councilmember O'Connell and Murphy. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending a specific plan located at 1324 2nd Avenue North at the southeast corner of 2nd Avenue North and Taylor Street, zone SP 4.82 acres. Councilmember uh, Murphy goes back to her favorite microphone. Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. I'd like to move to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. I see one hand in the back. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. I don't see anybody in opposition. Sir, would you like to speak? Nope. So I declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. I'd like to move for approval. All right, so there is actually a substitute uh, ordinance in the packet from Councilmember O'Connell. Hold on just a minute. I'm going to go to and Mr. Cooper. I'll go ahead and move the substitute. All right. So Council Member Murphy moves the substitute, properly seconded. Mr. Cooper, explanation of the substitute. The substitute can add some language concerning the pedestrian bridge. It would add a requirement that they uh, continue to work with Metro Parks on the final design of the pedestrian bridge and requires that the pedestrian bridge remain open to public access even though it's privately owned. All right, so you've heard an explanation of the substitute. Councilmember Murphy has moved the substitute. Questions about the substitute? All right, seeing none, we're on the substitute. All those in favor of the substitute say aye. Opposed, no. Substitute passes. Councilmember Murphy, you're on your bill now as substituted. Thank you. I'd like to move for approval. All right. So Councilmember Murphy has moved for approval of 2020-440 as substituted. Uh, again, properly seconded. All, any questions regarding the, um, the bill as substituted? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the bill BL 2020-440 as um, substituted passes on second reading. We're on item number 25, BL 2020-441, by Council Member Rosenberg, ordinance to amend Title 17 uh, by changing from RS40 to SB zoning for property located at 8045 Highway 100, it's approximately 600 feet west of Temple Road, and within the Highway 100 Urban Design Overlay District. <clears throat> Councilmember Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's move, uh, open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Can I see a show of uh, hands of those who are here in favor of this measure? Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Uh, seeing nobody uh, in either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Move approval. <coughs> Councilmember Rosenberg moves for approval. Uh, of BL 2020-441 on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of 2020-441 on second reading, say aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on second reading, BL 2020-441. Thank you, Councilmember Rosenberg. Uh, we're now on BL 2020-442 by Councilmember Parker. Um, and I can take this, I believe, with BL 2020-446 without objection. So I'm going to read the captions together. Uh, this is an ordinance <coughs> to amend Title 17 by canceling a portion of a plan unit development overlay district for a portion of property located at 515 Foster Street at the eastern terminus of Marina Street and along Ellington Parkway. It's on IR is 1.13 acres. And then I've got uh, BL 202446, also by Councilmember Parker. This is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from IR to SB zoning for properties located at 515 and 516 Foster Street at the eastern terminus of Foster Street and partially located within a planned development overlay district. Um, <coughs> uh, 
Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. All right. So I declare the public hearing on these two bills. It's um, BL 2024-42 and BL 2024-46. Uh, could I see a show of hands of those who are here in favor of either one of those two bills? Okay. I see a couple of hands. All right. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to either of those two bills. Seeing none, uh, those in favor wish to speak. If you do, you're welcome to come up. I see people not coming up, so the answer is no. Declare the public hearing closed. Uh, Councilmember Parker, you're recognized on the two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move uh, both for approval. <clears throat> All right, so I've got a motion to approve on second reading on BL 2024-42 and BL 2024-46. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the bills? Seeing none, uh, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill pa both those bills passed. Thank you, Councilmember Parker. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're on BL 2024-43 by Councilmember O'Connell and Murphy. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from MULA to SP zoning for property located at 806 16th Avenue North, approximately 200 feet southeast of Disha Street, 2.6 acres, <clears throat> to permit 449 multifamily residential units. Council member Murphy has gone back to her favorite podium. You're recognized. I think we should just rename this the O'Connell <coughs> Murphy podium potentially. We may just um, do it. And so with that, I'd like to open the public hearing. All right. So Council member Murphy has moved into the public hearing to clear it open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of this bill. See a couple hands in the back. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this bill. No hands. Those in favor wish to speak? Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. I'd like to move the substitute. All right. So um, Councilmember Murphy has moved the substitute, uh, properly seconded. Back to Mr. Cooper to explain the substitute. Substitute adds a number of conditions to the SP, um, specifically related to parking garage facade design and um, the uh, <coughs> layout of right-of-way improvements and sidewalks and obstructions. There's also a provision uh, dealing with emergency access and ensuring approval uh, by the fire marshal. Okay, you've heard the substitute. Back to you, Council Member Murphy. Renew my motion on the substitute. Okay, so. Um, Councilmember Murphy renews her motion on the substitute. Again, it's properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. Uh, opposed, no. Substitute passes. You're now on your bill as uh, substituted. Thank you. I'd like to uh, move the bill as substituted. Okay. So we're on BL 2024-43 as substituted. Uh, proper motion, proper second. Uh, she has moved the motion. Any discussion on the bill as substituted? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of 2024-43 as substituted say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion passes, BL 2024-43 as substitute passes on second reading. All right, we're on uh, item number 28. BL 2024-44 uh, by Councilmember Van Reese. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS 20 to ON zoning for property located at 1201 South Graycroft Avenue at the southeast corner of West Due West Avenue and South Graycroft Avenue. There she is. Testing. There you go. There you go. Um, just wanted to break in this podium over here. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay. Declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. See a hand in favor. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. Seeing nobody in opposition, those in favor wish to speak? Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. 
Council Member Van Rees, you're recognized. Uh, thank you very much. With that, I move approval. So Council Member Van Rees has moved approval on second reading of Bill 2024-44, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing nobody in the queue, we're ready to vote. All in favor of Bill 2024-44 say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Bill 2024-45 by Council Member Sledge. This is number 29 on your agenda. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from CS to MULA NS zoning for property located at 1621 Ensley Boulevard, northwest corner of Ensley Boulevard and 4th Avenue South. Council Member Sledge. You're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Please open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the motion. Okay, see a number of hands. A show of hands of those who are opposed to the uh, bill. See nobody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. Okay, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Councilmember Sledge has moved approval of Bill 202445, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none. Uh, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on second reading. <coughs> uh, we've already done BL 202446. We're now on uh, item number 31, BL 202447 by Council Member Hager. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from AR 2A to CS zoning for a portion of the property located at 4000 Andrew Jackson Parkway. Northern corner of Andrew Jackson Parkway and Old Hickory Boulevard is 3.24 acres. Council Member Hager, you are recognized at podium number five. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move to open the public hearing. Please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of the measure. Okay, see hands in favor. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the measure. See hands in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak, if you would come forward. Um, state your name, uh, address, and then you have two minutes in which to speak. You're recognized. Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the Metro Council, my name is Sean Henry, 315 Dedrick Street. Appreciate you accommodating us here in person this evening. This is much better than trying to talk, through, talk to you through a, a, a video screen or a telephone, so we appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to file for the record, if I may, a letter from my client, uh, Racetrack Petroleum. Uh, Racetrack is in Middle Tennessee trying to open up uh, quite a few uh, convenience stores throughout Middle Tennessee. They've got one approved in the Madison area. If you've had a chance to visit one, I'm sure that uh, it's, a, it's a convenience store like no other that you've been to. But I'd like to offer this for the record, if I may. Uh, it addresses, uh, for your information, the quality, the caliber of the business that they are. And importantly, it also addresses their communications with the current tenant on the property, which is a driving range and they're doing their best, as you will hear in a moment, to accommodate the continued operation of that driving range. Uh, but if not, what's important here is this rezoning is only 25% of the site. So only 25%, three, three, and a, three and a quarter acres, is being rezoned for commercial service to allow the development of this convenience store. The remainder of the property is 75% of the area, and that's gonna remain open space. It's agricultural zoning, it's floodplain uh, zoning, and it's gonna remain available for recreational use. So my client fully intends to accommodate continued recreational use on the remainder of the property that they're not rezoning. Um, the Planning Commission has approved this unanimously. Uh, there was a public hearing held, there was a deferral for further communications. Those communications were had, and the Metro Council unanimously approved it. So we appreciate the leadership that Councilman Hager has extended here. Uh, there's been quite a bit of activity on Facebook and things like that, as you can imagine. Uh, but Mr. Hager's very tuned in to what's uh, been transpiring there in the communication. We appreciate his leadership and we ask for your support to approve it on second reading. Thank you. Do you have- Thank you. Uh, Mr. Henry, you need to pass that in. Looking for the Sergeant at Arms. Here she Thank comes. Thank you. Here she comes, she's right over, coming over to your right. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next, uh, name, address, and you'll have two minutes in which to speak. 
Good evening. For the record, John Jansen, 200 Galleria Parkway, Atlanta, Georgia, 30339. Racetrack is a family-owned company that's been operating in the Southeast since 1939. We're currently the second largest privately held company in the state of Georgia, operating just over 700 store locations. Just last October, we opened our first Tennessee location down in Murfreesboro, and we have at least four projects in the Metro Nashville uh, location or in this area that's in various steps of the development process. Each racetrack location is corporately owned and employs corporate employees. Coming out of the August 27th Planning Commission, we recognize that floodplain and uh, keeping the green space and recreational use on the property as some of the biggest uh, points of concern. I wanted to point out that we are keeping the same amount of floodplain on this property post-development as they're in pre-development. So right now there's 9.8 acres in the floodplain and that will remain after we, are, uh, after we develop. As it relates to the uh, recreational use, we have been working with the current tenant to explore uh, ways in which we can keep them on the property and operating after we have developed as well. So we feel like we can, we can reach uh, an agreement there, so we have been working on ways to keep them on the property post-development as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak in favor of this measure? All right, those in opposition, if you would, please come on up. Uh, you can uh, line up if you'd like. Uh, I need your name, address, and you've got two minutes in which to speak. My name is Mary Cruz. I live at 6060 Hagers Grove Pass, Hermitage, Tennessee. Larry may have owned that land previously. I'm not real sure. Anyway, I'm speaking on behalf of many people who live, work, shop, and play, and drive in this area. And they're opposed to this plan to put a large fuel center there with 20 gas pumps, a market, coffee cafe, and beer sales. Why is this rezoning? request a horrible idea and not fair to our community. Number one, crime. The property is situated right after the highest crime stretch in Hermitage. It's a stretch of 2.4, 2.5 miles. And some of the nicknames for this stretch of crime are Drug Alley, Robbery Row, Tragedy Trail, and several others. And it is a fact that fuel centers lend themselves to crime and constant police protection. And thank you, Vice Mayor Schulman, for um, establishing a committee for safety. And I hope you'll come see us first out in our area. The fuel center right before this property, the um, MNPD activity reports for the past 20 months indicate 344 transactions, whereas the number of transactions on the property that's being proposed for rezoning during the same period had three transactions. It is not fair to our community or our police officers to deliberately cause an increase in crime. Metro Council, you can decide to extend this stretch of crime or stop it right there. All right, ma'am, I need to get you to finish up. Your okay, two minutes let me are finish up. up. Traffic, a large fuel center at this already busy intersection will greatly increase traffic and traffic accidents. The last traffic study was conducted 15 years ago. New apartments and other establishments have, been, have added over 1,000 people and their cars just in the last year and a half. Community needs, property owners have every right to sell their property, it, but it's up to the Metro Council to ensure that these new developments are good for the overall community rather than degrading. All right, so um, again, your two minutes are up. If I, I just need to ask you to stop. Okay. Okay. Now, Vice um, Mayor Schulman, you did tell me that I could read um, 
just a couple comments from other people that couldn't be here. So what has to happen is that you're supposed to turn them into the sergeant in arms and then they'll become a part of the record. Yeah, I have them to turn over. Okay, so she's right here. She's coming up to get them. Oh, uh, well, I have her copies in my briefcase. Okay, she can get them from you. Uh, yeah, I'll get them to you in just a second. Okay. Um, oh, I can't do for the other people? Yeah, you can't read for the other people. Oh, I can just hand them in. That's right, you hand them in. Oh, I thought I was able to speak for them. Thank you very much. No, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Make sure you hand it to the sergeant at arms, okay? Okay, anybody else wishing to speak? Come on up. Uh, need name, address, and you've got two minutes in which to speak. Stephen Sisko, 4000 Andrew Jackson Parkway, Hermitage, Tennessee. I'm the leasee and 20-year taxpayer on that property. Uh, I have some questions. Uh, the passing before the, or the first reading before the council, before the zoning changes, or is this the second reading going on right now? And uh, I believe on uh, the first uh, public opposition when we turned in a petition for 450 people who were opposed, uh, they were customers at the driving range. Action was deferred until the 927 meeting uh, which it was unanimously approved when Mr. Hager announced an agreement between racetrack and the driving range to continue, I believe, the driving range, and it was passed unanimously. Uh, no, finan no financials have been discussed, no financial impact on the owners uh, to move the infrastructure or anything like that has been finalized to this date. Uh, our concerns are a loss of the floodplains in the areas will cause greater flooding. Old Hickory Boulevard won't be closed for 18 hours in, like it was in 2010 when the floodplain on uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, Burger King, and Tire Discount across the street was a similar floodplain. I understand this is not being filled in, but my concern is will further you know, commercialization eventually eliminate a 100 to 500 year floodplain? You can't fool Mother Nature. 2010 was our first warning in Hermitage. Uh, that I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, a nice recreational area, which I, I am appreciative of the racetrack people saying that they wish to continue. Uh, however, the financial impact on us uh, may or may not be devastating. So that's our, my opposition. Thank you, sir. Um, someone else wishing to speak? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Just come on up to the microphone. Ms. Doris is going to clean it off. You got um, two minutes, just your name, address, and um, then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Thank you. Hi. My name is Sandy Sisko. I also co-own the driving range with my husband, Stephen. Well, we're leasing. We lease it. Let's put it that way. Uh, my concern is that Racetrack, although they seem to be very kind to us, is taking the prime property away. Uh, we presently have a, our pro shop there and our parking lot. And if we remain, we are being pushed over to the other side of the property, which is less desirable. And included in that is the FEMA floodplain of which you can't put anything on. So my concern is not only that, but you know, we're retirees and we purchased this 20 years ago, the infrastructure. And to start over from scratch is probably gonna be an impossibility. We don't know. We're talking with Racetrack. Uh, we're trying to figure something out because we want to stay open for the people of Hermitage. They love the driving range, and it's been a godsend in this time of COVID-19. Uh, we, uh, we've been open, we've got families that come. It's inexpensive outdoor recreation, and they don't want us to leave, and we don't want to leave. Uh, we're very upset with Councilman Hager because 
he never responded to my husband's emails or phone calls. We've not spoken with the man, and I assume that's him standing there. I've never seen him before. Um, you know, yeah, we don't own the property, but we did yearly pay the property taxes, and we deserve some kind of respect because we're the third party in this agreement here. Um, again, we hope to stay open. We hope to work something out with Racetrack, and I know that there will be a lot of disappointed people if we have to close our doors. Thank you very much for listening to me. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Ms. Green, you're recognized. I just uh, need your name again and your address. Darcy Green, 4312 Vons Cove Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, 37211. I'm not a member of the council, and I don't know these fine people here, but it seems clear to me that there are people here that own a golf range or lease a golf range that actually care about the community that they live in and want to have it be a nicer place, which is what you all should be doing, right? So. There are already 15 fuel centers within two miles of the property, and eight of those are within one mile or less, right? There's 15 gas stations. I think that sounds like there's plenty. Why would you want to put 20 more gas pumps on a floodplain? Sounds kind of environmentally quite dangerous, actually. Um, and why would you want to destroy a community that has a nice, pleasant place for people to go and enjoy their families and outdoor activities and leisure, right? This is uh, questions from people that live in the area. Will this development be better or worse for the area and its environment? Sounds like a no. Will it have a positive or negative impact on family, home values, and people's quality of life? Sounds like it would have a quite negative effect with crime and the like, right? Does it pass the logic and common sense test to have another fuel center that's already saturated with others? Seems like a no-brainer to me, boys and girls. Thank you, Ms. Green. Anybody else wishing to speak in opposition? Thank you, Ms. Doris. To close the public hearing closed. Councilmember Hager, you recognized. Well, this has probably been one of the most controversial zoning I've done since 608, which was the short-term rentals. As everybody recalled, it was on the council then. But the Bashams own this property. They've been trying to rezone it for years. They came to me about four or five years ago, wanted to put a restaurant, something else there. That didn't work out. This is like a 13 acre property. There's only three acres that is out of the floodplain. Now, when they came to me with this proposition, this is a commercial corridor down through there. And I said, well, let's see what planning commission says, traffic, parking, et cetera. We worked on that. Traffic and parking, they're gonna put some turn lanes in and things of that nature. Went to the planning commission. I've read a lot of the emails, or most of them. Most of the people that have made comments on this live at least a half a mile or more away. Most of them do not live in District 11. They live in District 12. The Planning Commission, when we talked about working out with them to keep the golf center open, I continue at one time. Racetrack got with all these people, and they're still working and negotiating on that to keep that golf center open. On top of that, um, I told them there are other golf centers close by, but most people want to continue to use this. And that's how I approached Racetrack and the, the Bashams. Y'all work on something with these present owners, and that's what they've been trying to do. And they still want to do that. I can't control everything that goes into a commercial service district. And the thing about this is, it's just the three acres. It's not in the floodplain. And the main thing and the main complaints that have been continuously about this property is maintaining the driving range. And that's what it is. It's a driving range there. And racetrack and the Bashams want to keep them. These people still have a lease on this property. 
So Mr. and Mrs. Cisco still have a lease on this property. I think it's two or three year lease. And I'm here to tell you that if Mr. Cisco had called me or sent me an email, I would have responded. And he did not. I reviewed all my emails. I reviewed my voicemails. And I got four or five different phone numbers, as y'all all know, where you can get in contact with me. So as such, I'm going to take the high road and say, I want to work with them. I want the racetrack and I want the Bashams to work with them. And probably between now and the third reading, hopefully that will get done. So I'm asking to pass this tonight and hopefully we can work out something and they can continue to work there. But as I said, they still have a lease agreement on here that the buyers will have to honor. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member Hager. Council Member Hager has moved for passage on second reading properly seconded. Uh, discussion on the motion. Again, remember this is just on second reading. Any discussion? Uh, Council Member Evans, you recognize? Hold on just a second. I've got to figure out which microphone you're on. There you go, Council Member. Hey, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I, as Councilman Hager mentioned, um, the majority of the opposition um, to this, this change um, really is coming from my district and District 12, since I have such a huge residential um, part of Hermitage. And my experience um, hearing from residents who have concerns, of course, talking to Councilman Hager, reading the information coming from Racetrack, I think the, the spirit of wanting to move forward with Racetrack and and having uh, the driving range go through their lease. Um, I, th I think the spirit is there. Whether it'll work out, I mean, I don't know. I'm not involved uh, to that extent. But I think the, the biggest thing that I want to emphasize, of course, is Councilman Hager does a really good job. And in the end, it's really important that our community figure out what we want to have. We're really good at saying what we don't want, but we need to come together and work on what do we want to have. And in the end, I, I feel like um, Councilman Hager has uh, tried to work uh, you know, with uh, the, the landowners and come up with a good solution. And I'd really like to encourage Racetrack to continue to try to work with the folks about the driving range because there are a lot of people that really would like it to stay and run out the lease. So really, that's all I wanted to say. All right. Thank you, Council Member Evans. Anybody else wishing to speak? All right, so we're on a motion to approve on second reading bill 2024-47. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor of the motion to pass on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Yeah, it's on second reading, it's just the voice vote. So the motion passes on second reading and um, then um, we'll come up again on third reading. Thank you all for being here tonight and the folks in the back. So the bill passes on second reading. We're now on item number 32, BL 2024-48 by Council Member Toombs, ordinance to amend title 17 by changing from CL to MULANS zoning for properties located at 2213 Gain Street and 2236 Whites Creek Pike, southeast corner of Free Silver Road <coughs> and Whites Creek Pike. It's 0.43 acres. Councilmember Toombs, I found you. You recognize. Vice Mayor, this is going to have to be deferred to the first meeting in November for lack of notice. Have I got you at the right microphone? I see the green. Yeah, I can hear you. <coughs> okay. So this one, it gets deferred for... Um, Hold on just a second. <clears throat> Councilmember Toombs, we're just checking to make sure this is right.
that to be deferred. So, Council Member Toombs is correct. It needs to be deferred. So, uh, Council Member uh, Toombs, what is your motion? To defer to the first meeting in November. All right. So, the motion is to defer to the first meeting in November. Uh, no public hearing on this one tonight. That's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion is adopted. It moves to the first meeting in November. <clears throat> that completes our bills on public hearing. Thank you all for being here. The members of the public who are still with us, thank you all for being here. Uh, we're now on uh, consent resolutions. resolutions. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through <coughs> the resolutions on the consent agenda. There's a bunch of them. Um, so pay attention, and then if I have something on the consent agenda that needs to be bumped off, let me know. So I'm going to go through the items right now. Um, I have got uh, 546 on the consent agenda, 547 on the consent agenda, 548, 549, 550, 551, 554, 555, 556, 557, 558, 559, 560, 561, 562, 563, 564, 565, 566, 567, 568, 569, 570, 571, 572, 573, 574, 575, 578, and 570. Nine. <clears throat> Anything that needs to be changed off the consent agenda? Councilmember Rosenberg, you're recognized. Podium number 10. Councilmember Rosenberg. 559, please. 559. <clears throat> 559, uh, bump off. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Councilmember Syracuse, so you're at podium number five. Councilmember Syracuse, you're recognized. 547, can we take that off? Thanks. Five forty-seven. That's bumped. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Sawara, hold on just a minute. Councilmember Sawara, you're recognized. Uh, 578. All right, anything? I see some people up at a podium. Councilmember Nash, Councilmember Taylor. Okay. Any? Councilmember Van Rees. Hold on just a minute. Uh, you're, you're just right trying there. to catch up. You did uh, pull 576. Uh, 576 is not on the consent Thank you. agenda. Okay, anybody else? Anything else needs to be pulled? Just so you know, there are two mice up here. Mouses, there are two mice. I'm not good with one, okay? <clears throat> so I was trying to use this one to get rid of this one. All right. So, um, I'm going to go through the uh, captions on the bills on the consent agenda. We're on resolution RS-2020-546 by Council Member Toombs and Johnston. Resolution ap appropriating certain amounts of the benefits of various metropolitan governments of Nashville and Davidson County departments, uh, $32,100,000 in CARES Act funding. RS-2020-548 by Toombs and Johnston. Resolution amending RS-2020-516, clarify that small businesses eligible for financial assistance 
through pathway lending can use federal or state tax returns to determine eligibility and to reallocate $200,000 previously designated. Uh, RS-2020-549, uh, resolution accepting a grant from the State of Tennessee Division of Elections um, to the Metropolitan Government Acting Bond through the Davidson County Election Commission to provide election security assistance, purchase hardware, software, or other items. RS-2020-550 by Council Member Toombs, resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Diane Hunter against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $60,000. RS-2020-551 by Toombs, Gamble and Stiles, resolution approving an interlocal agreement between the Emergency Communications District um, and the Metropolitan Government for the provision of services and reimbursement of costs pertaining to enhanced 911 services. <coughs> RS-2020-554, resolution approving the First Amendment to the License Agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Verizon Wireless to install in-building radio distribution devices within the Richard Fulton Main Office Building and the Howard Office Building. RS-2025-55, House or Tombs, Murphy and Nash, resolution approving an option agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Jay Patel, authorizing the purchase of certain property owned by Jay Patel located at 0 Old Hickory Boulevard. RS-202556 by Toombs, Taylor and Suara, resolution approving Amendment 1 to appropriate, grants, uh, to appropriate grant funds from the Kresge Foundation to the Metropolitan Government Acting Bond through the Metropolitan Action Commission for the MAC-4 Jobs making, change, making a Change for Jobs project to expand opportunities in America's cities through grant making and social investing. <coughs> RS-202557 by Council Member Gamble. Resolution approving Amendment 1 to a grant from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency uh, to the Metropolitan Government Acting Bond through the Office of Emergency Management to provide resources to procure items, training, and or equipment for hazardous materials preparedness. RS-202558 by Toombs and Gamble. <coughs> Resolution approving an application from a Homeland Security grant from the State of Tennessee, uh, Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County. RS-2025-60 by Council Member Toombs, resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Ivan Ewing, a minor against the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County in the amount of $5,800. RS-2025-61 by Council Member Toombs, resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the claims of Ada Thaxter against the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County in the amount of $40,000 set amount to be paid out of the Judgment and Losses Fund. RS-2025-62 by Council Member Toombs, resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law <coughs> to compromise and settle the Metropolitan Government's judgment lien against the properties located at 365 Monaco Drive. RS-2025-63, resolution accepting a grant from the Tennessee State Library and Archives to the Metropolitan Government acting bond through the Nashville Public Library to provide funds to purchase Chromebooks and mobile Wi-Fi hotspots for use by library patrons and staff working from home. <coughs> RS-2025-64 by Toombs, Van Rees, Allen, Sawara, and Stiles. Resolution approving Amendment 1 to a grant from the Nashville Public Library Foundation to the Metropolitan Government acting bond through the Nashville Public Library to partially fund a project coordinator position for the NASA Youth Level Outcomes Framework Research Initiative. RS-2025-65. Resolution approving Amendment 1 to a grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Human Services to the Metropolitan Government acting through the Metropolitan Board of Health to conduct immunization record audits for child care centers, drop-in centers, and group child care homes to ensure the safety and well-being of children and families in Tennessee. <coughs> RS-2025-66 by Toombs, Taylor, Suara, and Stiles. Resolution approving Amendment 2 to a grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health for the Healthy Start Home Visiting Program to identify and provide comprehensive services to improve outcomes for eligible families who reside at at-risk communities. RS-2025-67 by Toombs, Taylor, and Suara. Resolution approving Amendment 1 to a grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health to provide public health activities to enhance the health and well-being of women, infants, and families. Uh, RS-2025-68 by Toombs and Taylor, resolution approving a grant contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville 
acting through the Metropolitan Board of Health and the Mental Health Cooperative to provide outreach assessments and linkage to care for individuals affected in high impact areas. Resolution RS-2020-569 by Council Member Taylor. Resolution approving a business associates agreement between the Metropolitan Government acting through the Metropolitan Board of Health and Teletax to provide safeguards to prevent the disclosure of projected health information. RS-2020-570 by Toombs and Taylor. Resolution approving an agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and Teletax Inc. to provide notification message delivery services in connection with the scheduler and messenger services. RS-2020-571 by Toombs and Taylor. Resolution approving a grant contract between the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and the Mental Health Cooperative to provide a secure drop-off location for persons needing a mental, mental health urgent care alternative to an emergency room or correctional facility. RS-2020-572 by Toombs, Van Reese, Allen and Hancock. Resolution accepting a grant from the Garden Club of Nashville to the Metropolitan Government acting through the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation to fund the installation of 190 trees in Clinton Fist Park. RS-2020-573 by Toombs and Nash. Resolution approving an application of the Metropolitan Government acting through the Metropolitan Department of Public Works for the Advanced Transportation and Congestion Management Technology Deployment program, program for the development of model deployment sites for large-scale installation and operation of advanced transportation technology. RS-2020-574 by O'Connell, Murphy and Nash. Resolution to amend Ordinance Number BL-2020-357 to authorize the Metropolitan Government to re relocate existing water main for property located at 1221 Broadway. RS-2020-575 by Councilmember Johnston, a resolution approving the election of certain notary publics for Davidson County. RS-2020-579 by Bradford and Hancock, resolution recognizing Madison Eddins on her selection to represent Tennessee at the White House's art exhibit celebrating 100 years of women's suffrage. And that's it. Did I get them all? I believe I got them all. <clears throat> now we're going to take a test on everything I just said. All right. All right. <clears throat> Those are the resolutions on the consent agenda. I'm now going to go to committee reports. Council Member Toombs is hanging out over at podium number one. Council Member Toombs, you recognize a report from Budget and Finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted to approve Resolution 2020, 546, 548, 549, 550, 551, 552, 940 against, 555, uh, 840 against, 556, 558, uh, 560, 561, 563, 564, 565, 566, uh, 940 against, 568, 570, 840 against, 567, 571, 572, 940 against, and 573, 840 against. Mr. Cooper, will get them all? <laughs> okay, thank you. Council Member Toombs, thank you. I am now looking for, I'll go to Council Member Rutherford, you're back on um, podium number three. Uh, personnel. Thank you, Mr. President. On RS 2020-554, personnel committee uh, voted six in favor, zero against. Okay. Thank you, Council Member Rutherford. I've got Council Member Taylor. You're at. I think you're at podium number six. There you go. There you go. <coughs> Thank you. Health, Health and Hospitals. Health Hospitals and Social Services voted to approve 556, 565, 566, 567, 568, 569, 570, 571, five in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right. Thank you, Council Member Taylor. I've got Council Member Van Rees, podium number one. You recognize for uh, Parks, Library, and Arts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Parks, Library, and Arts uh, considered 547, 563, 564, and 572, and voted six in favor, zero against, and all of the above. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Van Rees. I've got Councilmember Murphy back at podium number 10. Councilmember Murphy, you recognize. Thank you. Planning, Zoning, and Historical <laughs> voted 12 in favor, zero against on resolution 2025 
555, and then you've got 574. That was the same. On, on all the consent ones, we were 12 in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you, Council Member Murphy. I've got um, Council Member um, Campbell, podium number four. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Public safety, beer, and regulated beverages voted uh, for recommended approval for RS 2020 551, 557, and 558. Seven in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you, Council Member Gamble, Public Works. Council Member Nash. The Public Works Committee approved RS 2020 553, eight in favor, zero against. We approved RS 2020 555. Seven in favor, zero against. We approved uh, RS 2020 573, seven in favor, zero against. RS 2020 574, seven in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member Nash. Council Member Johnston, rules and confirmations. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Rules, confirmations, and public elections considered RS 2020 546. 549, 575, and 579. We voted four, um, 10 in favor, zero against, zero abstaining. And with that, I would move approval of the consent agenda. All right, so Council Member Johnston has moved approval of the consent agenda, properly seconded. Any discussion on the items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, none. <clears throat> uh, motion passes, consent agenda is approved. All right, so thank you for that. Now we're gonna go back and pick up the resolutions uh, that were not on the consent agenda. We'll go through these carefully, make sure I don't miss anything. All right, so we're on RS 2020 518 by Council Member Glover. So resolution providing amendments to the charter in the Metropolitan Government of National Destin County, Tennessee, uh, in accordance with Article 19, Section 19.01 thereof, and setting forth a brief description of each amendment to be placed upon the ballot. Council Member Glover, is um, not here, so um, it is uh, deferred by rule, correct? Do we have a committee There's a committee report, so we can get the committee report. Council Member Syracuse, hold on just a second, let me find you. You recognize Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. <laughs> Charter Revision Committee considered RS 2020 518 and recommended an indefinite deferral Five four zero against. Okay. Uh, Council Member Mendes, you're standing at a podium. You want to be recognized. You're at podium number one. Uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move to suspend the rules to allow us to consider this today. Um, and if you want, I can explain the reason why. All right. Um, so, um, so Council Member Mendes has moved to suspend the rules. Go ahead and uh, explain the reason why. Um, thanks. Um, so this is about um, yet another uh, charter referendum item. I think um, we would all agree that it, uh, its existence on our agenda creates confusion. Um, there's essentially no likelihood that we're ever going to approve it. Um, and it's a very high likelihood that it will continue to get an indefinite deferral recommendation from the charter revision committee. And so I'm moving to suspend the rules so we can just take care of this tonight and, and uh, clarify for the citizens of Davidson County what's potentially on a ballot for December 15th. All right, so Council Member Glover um, is not here. So uh, Council Member Mendes has moved to suspend the rules to take this matter up today. Um, it requires a suspension of the rules. Uh, rules Committee? Did not go to the Rules Committee, correct? All right, so uh, Council Member Mendes has moved to suspend the rules. Is there objection to suspension of the rules? If so, uh, I need to see a show of hands. All right, uh, rules are suspended. Council Member Mendes, you're on your, uh, on your uh, motion. I'd like to move this for indefinite deferral. Okay, so Council Member Mendes has moved to, uh, uh, move to defer 2025-18 for indefinite deferral properly seconded discussion on the indefinite deferral motion. All right, seeing none, we're on the motion to defer indefinitely. This is RS 2020 five, uh, 518. All those in favor of the indefinite deferral? Oh, I'm sorry, Council Member Johnston, 
Uh, hold on. Let me find out where you are. You're at podium number three. Councilmember Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you. I just, um, this is a very serious nature, and I think before we, of course, I guess it's, the motion's already on the floor, but I would like for this body to really look into what this would do so that we're all on the same page. I think it's worth a discussion. Is that possible at this moment since the motion to defer indefinitely has already been made? So the motion to, so the, the motion is before us properly. Um, so the motion to defer indefinitely is also properly before us. It was properly seconded. So um, Councilmember Johnston, you're recognized for discussion on that motion to defer indefinitely. I don't know that I have an objection to that. I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew what this charter amendment would do if, if we were to take it up. I don't think that's been fully discussed. So I don't know what to do at this point as far as rules of procedure, to be honest. Um, okay, so again, let me make sure I've got this right with Mr. Cooper. So um, <clears throat> Councilmember Glover has a uh, resolution before us. Councilmember Glover is not here. Um, Councilmember Mendez moved to suspend the rules to get to open it up. Um, that was allowed. His motion is to defer indefinitely. Again, that's the proper motion before us. If there's a specific question on the motion or if you want to argue for or against the motion, you can do that. No, I would, I would ask if Councilman uh, Mendez would be open to withdrawing the motion temporarily just so we could discuss it and then renew the motion. Is that, would that be friendly, Councilman Mendez? And this is not about my for or against it. I, I just think we need to, dis to discuss it. Uh, Councilmember Mendez, you're recognized. Uh, I, I think it would be appropriate to raise issues about the substance as argument against the motion for indefinite deferral. So I think if the council member wants to talk about the substance or ask Mr. Cooper about the substance, I think that's fair game on the motion for indefinite deferral. Councilmember Johnston, you're yeah, recognized. If, if we could get uh, uh, Mr. Cooper to explain to us exactly what this charter amendment would do so that we all know, that would be super helpful. All right. Councilmember, um, uh, Council uh, Director Cooper, you're recognized. I would first note that under the charter, the council gets two resolutions per term to put amendments on. Uh, the council approved one at the last meeting, so that means there's one more for the rest of the three years. So if, if this one, if this resolution was approved, that, that would be it for charter amendments for the term. Um, second, if it's deferred, which it would be by rule any, anyway, um, that gets you out of the time period from the December 15th election date. So it would trigger another special election um, so not only would you potentially have an election on December 15th, you would have another one probably sometime in, in January. Um, but as far as the substance of the uh, amendments, it makes actually three different amendments. Uh, the first one would provide that you could not have an increase in property taxes more than 12% over a given two-year period. Um, there is a condition in that amendment that it's subject to uh, compliance with state law. So uh, my position is that the state law would have to change to enable that amendment to be effective, um, but it, it on its face would, would limit it to a 12% increase over any two-year period. Uh, the second one would provide that to the extent permitted by Tennessee law, any executive order issued by the mayor or a um, health director emergency health order would expire after 30 days unless extended by the council by resolution receiving 30 votes. So it would be a super, super majority vote to extend those beyond 30 days. The third one would allow petition led charter amendments to be submitted um, once per year instead of once every two years. Councilmember Johnston. Thank you for that. That was very helpful. And thank you, Councilman Mendez, for allowing that. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go back to um, Councilmember Mendez. Uh, so the motion is to defer this indefinitely, correct? That's the proper motion? Yes, sir. So again, properly seconded. Any more discussion? Councilmember Hurt? Uh, if you can, if you want to come to this microphone, that's fine. Councilmember Hurt is recognized. She is at podium number four. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd also like to know how much would it cost to have those two elections? How much would it cost the city if we had to take this to a vote? Each special election would be between $800,000 and a million dollars. So you'd be looking at 1.6 to 2 million for two elections. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Hart, and thank you for claiming the microphone. Other discussion? All right, seeing none, we're on the motion to defer indefinitely. This is RS-2025-18. Nobody else in the queue. We're ready to vote. All those in favor of uh, the motion to defer indefinitely, say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, no. Aye. Uh, the motion passes. Okay, so the bill is deferred indefinitely. All right, we're now on um, RS-2025-27 by Council Member Hall. Uh, this is a resolution appropriating a total of $1.5 million from the COVID-19 pandemic fund to Jefferson Street United Merchants Partnership and Street Works for COVID-19 related community outreach. Uh, Council Member Hall um, is not here, so um, it's deferred by rule. Okay. So it will be uh, deferred one meeting by rule. We're on RS-2025-47 by Council Members Toombs, Van Reese, Johnston and Stiles. Resolution amending RS-2025-15 to clarify that all Nashville music venues, venues with less than $5 million in revenue are eligible for funds under that resolution. Council Member Toombs is recognized at podium number one. Council Member Toombs. Right. Committee report. Okay. Um, uh, went to rules. Council Member Johnston, you're back at council at podium number three. You're recognized. Thank you. Um, rules, uh, confirmations, and uh, elections voted 10 in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you, Council Member Johnston. Back to you, Council Member Toombs. Pardon me, um, Vice Mayor, which number, which resolution are we on? We're on 2025 46. Oh, uh, it went to budget. Budget and finance voted to approve 940 against. Okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm in different places. I'm looking at, I've got lots of things all happening on the same calendar. So we're on, um, this is 547, correct? Is that the right one? So Council Member Toombs, I'm sorry. This is um, RS 2025-47. It actually went to Parks and Library in Budget and Finance. So um, my fault. Uh, I need to go to Parks and Library, so I'm going to Council Member uh, Van Reese. But Council Member Johnston, you did a good job of faking me off. Good job. All right. <laughs> you seem so, um, I mean, you just, you gave me the report. Council Member Van Reese at podium number one, you're recognized on RS 2020-547. Yeah, for, for those playing at home, I actually did give the report earlier on the consent agenda. Good. Well, um, let, let's just do it again. 547, we voted six in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you. Now, Council Member Toombs, I'm on the right resolution. It's RS 2020 547. Budget Committee report on that one. Budget and Finance voted to recommend approval, 940 against. All right. And now you're on RS 2020 547 um, on your resolution. Move for approval. So Council Member Toombs has moved for approval of RS-2025-47, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on that? Council Member Syracuse, podium number five, <clears throat> you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor, and I appreciate my, my colleague's indulgence of, of taking this off consent, just to be able to ask one question. I really appreciate it. Um, I guess this could go to the CARES Act, uh, either committee, the sponsor, or the administration. I just want to be sure the original intent of this was to uh, support those venues that were going to be going away forever. And I just wanted to be sure that this uh, clarification resolution doesn't expand the scope that would negate our ability to affect those that we're going to lose. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member of Syracuse. Was that, that was sort of a question. Yeah. So I'm looking to see if anybody wants to answer it over at the administration table. And let me find, let me find that pod that thing. Oh, over here. Oh, now this is getting even more difficult. Hold on. <clears throat> RS 
All right, I believe that one is now hot. Great, thank you, Councilmember Syracuse. Um, the original intention was to ensure that the venues were located in Nashville, but it ended up saying Nashville owned, which we realized could be confusing uh, if you um, had an owner that did not live in Davidson County, but maybe in one of the surrounding counties, but the venue itself is in Davidson County. So this does not um, change the original intent um, and it should not limit anybody or bring anybody in that was not intended. Councilmember Syracuse, you good? All right. All right, so we are, make sure I'm on the right resolution. We're on RS 2020-547, correct? Make sure I'm on the right one. Correct, Mr. Cooper? Good, okay. So council member Toombs has moved for passage, properly seconded. Any other discussion on this one? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. RS 2020-547. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Resolution RS 2020-547 passes. We're now on <coughs> RS 2020-552 by council members Taylor and Toombs. This is a resolution authorizing the uh, Industrial Development Board of the Metropolitan Government to negotiate and accept payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes with respect to a neighborhood transit center to be located at the intersection of Clarksville Pike and 26th Avenue North. Councilmember Taylor, you are at podium number six. You're recognized. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, committee reports. All right, this went to budget and finance. Councilmember Toombs. You recognized. Budget and finance recommended approval 940 against. All right. Back to you, Councilmember Taylor. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so this resolution uh, is, is uh, the first steps to uh, getting a transit uh, a station in North Nashville. North Nashville has one of the highest riderships in the city, uh, and this will give us a great opportunity uh, to move uh, some of those individuals and our constituents uh, to and from throughout the city uh, in a much more effective manner. All right, so um, you want to move for approval? Thank you, I'd like to move for approval. All right, so I've got a motion to approve RS 202552, properly seconded discussion on the resolution. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. aye. Councilmember Mendez, you're recognized at podium number one. Thank you. Um, I, I asked to have this taken off consent um, so we could have a brief discussion about um, what would happen if the current petition um, referendum item were law right now. And uh, we should all realize that if that petition um, that does more than deal with tax rate, it deals with a lot of other things, including creating referendum elections for long-term election, for long-term leases. If that were law right now, this item that would have otherwise been on the consent agenda, which got a unanimous vote from the Budget and Finance Committee, would create a million dollar election in Davidson County because the lease involving this property is for more than 20 years. And it's important that we all know when we're dealing out in, our, in the community with the upcoming referendum, it's not just about tax rate, it's about the fact that things like this would create a referendum election. Things like every time uh, when we've approved leases for the Ford Ice Centers in both parts of the county, those would, would have created elections uh, to go to the full county. Every time we passed a capital spending plan over the last several years, would have created an election. And this um, great bill um, with no dissent um, good work by Councilman Taylor, good work by the administration is something that would trigger a million dollar election if that petition were passed. That's one of the reasons why we need to work so hard on defeating that. And I want to make sure we made note of that, that if that thing passes, things like this change a lot in how we do business a few months down the road. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right, thank you, Councilman Remendez. Anybody else wish to speak? All right, we're back. Councilmember Taylor, there's somebody in the queue. Councilmember Taylor has made a motion to approve RS-2020-552 as properly seconded. Anybody else wishing to discuss? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 
resolution is adopted. We're on item number 42. This is RS-2020-553 by Toombs, Nash, and Taylor. It's a resolution amending resolution number RS-2017-713 pertaining to capital funds for transit system projects for the Metropolitan Transit Authority. Council Member Toombs is at podium number one. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. <coughs> So I've got Public Works, Councilmember Nash, you're at podium number six. You recognize Public that. Works uh, passed, uh, moved for approval, eight in favor, zero against. All right, back to you, Councilmember Toombs, uh, Budget and Finance. Budget and Finance, recommend approval, eight, four, zero against, one abstention. All right. So move for approval. Councilmember Toombs has moved for approval on RS-2025-53. Properly seconded. Any discussion on RS 202553? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Resolution passes. We're on. Resolution RS 202559. Uh, by Council Members Toombs, Gamble, Bradford, Hancock, and Stiles. Resolution accepting a grant from the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security to the Metropolitan Government acting bond through the Metropolitan National Police Department to provide community-based traffic safety enforcement and education to reduce traffic fatalities and distracted driving. Council Member Toombs is still back at podium number one. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. <coughs> Committee report. Public safety. Council Member Gamble, you're at podium number four. Public safety recommended approval, 740 against. All right. Thank you, Council Member Gamble. Back to you, Council Member Toombs, for budget and finance. Budget and finance recommended approval, 940 against. All right. Council Member Toombs, you're on your resolution. Move for approval. Council Member Toombs has moved for approval on 2025 59, properly seconded. Um, any discussion? Councilman Rosenberg, do you wish to be recognized on this one? Okay, Councilman Rosenberg at um, podium 10. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I apologize uh, for not grabbing this in committee, but I was, uh, just wanted to make sure there were no privacy concerns and was hoping the administration could explain what this, uh, what this does briefly. All right, hold on. Um, Mr. Jamison, administration service. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Rosenberg. Yes, Captain uh, Chris Gilder from the MNPD was present at the Public Safety Committee meeting. Um, this does not have any, uh, if I understand correctly, the, the privacy concerns that you have um, uh, championed in the past. This would not infringe upon those. In the fine print on the attached resolution contract, it does describe some of the fuller services and training that will be applied under the terms of the grant. It refers to standardized field sobriety testing, traffic stops, radar training, officer Spanish communication, education, and networking opportunities, but there is no license plate scanning or, or surveillance video or anything like that. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Councilman Rosenberg. All right. Anybody else wishing to speak on this particular resolution? Seeing nobody else in the queue. Uh, we're on resolution RS 2020 559. Uh, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. We're now on resolution RS 2020. I've got 576. Which one you got? All right. So we're on RS 202576. It's item number 65. It's on page 21 of your agenda. It's a resolution requesting the COVID-19 Financial Oversight Committee to recommend the Met to the Metropolitan Council um, the appropriation of not less than $1 million of CARES Act COVID-19 funds to the Metropolitan Arts Commission for distribution of national arts and cultural nonprofits. Um, 
Council Member Van Rees, you are recognized at podium number one. Uh, yes, committee reports, please. All right, it went to um, Budget and Finance. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized also at the same podium. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Budget and Finance uh, did not uh, have a recommendation. There's three for, three against, with one exemption. Ex right. Abstention. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Toon. Uh, Council Member um, Van Rees, you're recognized for uh, Parks and Library. Um, yes, uh, our, our committee uh, also um, heard the conversation earlier today. Um, as the sponsor, I am uh, asking for a one meeting deferral of this resolution. I believe the substitute has been withdrawn. So, Councilor Van Reese, uh, we're just checking. Uh, can you, do you have a committee report out of parks? Um, approval six in favor, zero against for one meeting deferral. Okay, got it. And that's what you're, that's what you're asking for tonight? Correct. Okay. So, Council Member Van Reese has moved to defer this one meeting. Uh, properly seconded. Any other discussion on this one? Uh, I just, if I, if I can, just quantify why I'm deferring. Sure. Councilman <laughs> um, Van Rees. Um, I, I, I remain, uh, as I mentioned uh, at previous conversations about this, full-throated in regard to our uh, commitment to the nonprofit arts organizations in Nashville. Uh, however, understanding that the COVID-19 Financial Oversight Committee is meeting later this week and needs to take up um, our, a number of different uh, opportunities that they will be facing, uh, I wanted to defer this so that they can do their work and we can decide whether or not uh, new additional or um, uh, amendments to the language of the current substitute, uh, the current um, resolution are necessary. So we just need that oxygen, if you will, to make sure that we get it right. All right, thank you, Council Member Van Reed. So the motion before us is a deferral motion. Council Member Johnston, you're recognized at podium number three. Um, I just wanted to clarify that this is just a re resolution requesting that the Financial Oversight Committee recommend, but not an actual allocation. And I'm seeing nodded head from- Yes, <laughs> yes that is correct. That's, that's been the intent. and. And if that language needs to be um, clarified even further uh, when it's brought back, I'm happy to do that, but yes. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. Thank All you. All right, thank you. Council Member Johnston, Council, Man Council Member Sepulveda, back at uh, podium number 10. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I, I guess I'm having a little hard time with this because um, I wanna make sure that we don't cut out uh, the committee and it is made up of many different members that aren't on council. And so we work very diligently and we add specific language. And I, I wanna make sure that we stick with the process that we have had. I, I'm just worried that this might open up the doors to um, other uh, resolutions that, that might um, try to um, come up with, with um, specific legislation or push specific agendas that the committee might not be comfortable with. We are meeting with several different departments and this uh, is one of our top priorities. So I, I, I guess my, I would just encourage um, uh, my fellow council member if she would be willing to withdraw this. All right, thank you, Council Member Sepulveda. Again, we're on a motion to defer one meeting. Uh, Council Member Van Reed. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, for the very reasons you've uh, brought up is the reason for the deferral. And uh, I will make, make a decision at the next meeting whether or not it needs to be withdrawn or changed or, or brought forward. But that's the request for, for now, is just to simply defer it for one meeting. Council Member Sepulveda. I, 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 I appreciate that. I, I still stand with my statement that this can open the door for other similar resolutions that will be, that the committee won't be brought into. Um, so I, I, I would still suggest that we withdraw this indefinitely. All right. All right, so the motion before us right now is uh, defer just one meeting. Uh, yes, sir, I renew my motion to defer for one meeting. Council Member Sepulveda, any other comments? No. All right. All right, so uh, we're on a motion to defer one meeting. 
It was properly seconded. Any other discussion on the motion to defer? Seeing none, we're voting on a motion to defer one meeting. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion uh, passes on voice vote. Uh, it will be deferred one meeting. Okay. We're on item number 66. This is a uh, resolution requesting the Metro Board of Public Education to reopen all schools immediately following the school system's fall break by Council Member Glover. It was referred to the Education Committee. Uh, Council Member Evans is going to the microphone. Council Member Evans, you're recognized. Uh, we deferred by rule. Okay, so this one is defer deferred by rule. Uh, it'll be up on the next meeting. Okay. Um, next one I've got is RS 2025-78. RS 2025-78 by Sawara, Council Member Suara, O'Connell, Parker, and a host of other council members. Resolution calling on the National Federation of State High School Associations and the Tennessee Secondary School Athletic Association to amend its rule relative to head coverings. Council Member Suara is at podium number four. You're recognized. Thank you. Committee reports, please. All right. Our rules and confirmation way back at, at podium number three. You're recognized. Council Member Johnston. Thank you. We voted 10 in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Back to you, Council Member Suara. Thank you. I'm going to move for approval with a brief comment. Okay. So Council Member Soar has moved for approval of RS-2025-78, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Soar. Thank you. Uh, many of us may be aware that there was an incident that happened not too long ago where uh, a freshman at a high school in Nashville, uh, a volleyball player, was not allowed to play because of our head covering. Uh, this has sparked a lot of uh, debate and conversation nationwide. Uh, as to why uh, Muslim students are required to get a waiver before they can play as something that is part of the religious belief and the religious uh, dressing. And so this resolution is just adding our voice to everyone that is talking to the uh, National Athletic Association and the Tennessee Secondary School Athletic Association and the National Federation of State High School Association that they need to remove this rule uh, because it's an infringement on the First Amendment right of Muslim girls that wants to play, and it's something that is not supposed to be required. It should just be automatic. This young girl is a child that I have known since when she was young, and she was, had, I mean, it was very emotional for her when she has to be on the sideline and couldn't play with her friends. And so I'm requesting that my colleagues support this, and that we send, send a statement that anything that discriminates uh, based on religious or anything that infringes your First Amendment right is something that we do not want to tolerate. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member Sawara. Um, again, we are on Resolution RS 2025-78. It's been properly seconded. Anybody else wishing to speak on this resolution? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Resolution passes. Thank you, Council Member Sawara. We're now on Resolution RS 2025-80. It's a resolution honoring the life of United States Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, Council Member Murphy and Hurt and a host of other folks are on this one. I'm going to go to Council Member Murphy, who is at podium number nine. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports. <coughs> this went to rules. Council Member Johnston, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We voted 10 in favor, zero against um, as amended. Okay. Thank you, Council Member Johnston. Back to you, Council Member Murphy. Thank you. I'd like to move the amendment, please. All right. So uh, Councilmember Murphy has moved the amendment properly. Seconded back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Thank you. The uh, amendment simply adds some additional language to this uh, Women's Caucus resolution honoring uh, former Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, this is a, a piece of legislation that we all submitted some language to, and this just got in uh, late. And so with that, I also invite others uh, who want to speak on this. They are welcome to, but with, uh, I would like to just go ahead and move the, mo the amendment at this time. Okay, so Council Member Murphy has moved the amendment properly, seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. 
Amendments adopted. Councilmember Murphy, you're back on your resolution as amended. Move the bill as amended. Councilmember Murphy has moved the resolution as amended, properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution as amended? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. RS 2025-80 as amended. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Resolution as amended is adopted. Thank you, Councilmember Murphy. We're on resolution RS 2025-81 by Councilmember Stiles, Virtual Van Rees, and a, a host of other council members. Resolution recognizing October 2020 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Nashville and Davidson County, Tennessee. Councilmember Stiles, you're recognized. <coughs> you are back at podium number 10. You're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports? Uh, rules and confirmations. Councilmember Johnston at podium number three. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We voted 10 in favor, zero against, as amended. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Councilmember Stiles. Thank you very much. I would like to move the amendment that I have for this resolution with brief comment. All right. So Councilmember Stiles has moved the amendment properly seconded. Back to you for a brief comment on your amendment. So this is actually just a housekeeping amendment. There were some dates that needed to be corrected. All right. So Councilmember Stiles is moving an amendment. It's a housekeeping amendment. Again, it was properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Councilmember Stiles? So thank you, everyone. I just wanted to remind everyone, as October is Domestic Violence Month, I wanted to do this resolution particularly because during COVID, we've seen numbers spike across the country um, in domestic violence cases. And in particular, we have 200,000 calls nationwide to domestic violence hotlines. And here at the Office of Family Safety, they've seen a 270% increase over calls from March to October of, 20, of 2019 to this year. And our Weaver Domestic Violence Center, which is celebrating their 20th anniversary, also had a significant increase in calls as well. I wanted to ask if we could all sign on to this bill so we can all be in support of fighting against domestic violence. And with that, I would ask that we move the resolution. All right, so we have to get the amendment on first. <clears throat> so um, Council Member Stiles has moved for adoption of the amendment, which is properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? All right, seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. Council Member Stiles, now you're on your resolution as amended. So Thank proper. you, Vice Mayor. Okay. I'd like to move for approval, please. Okay, so Council Member Stiles has moved for approval of a resolution as amended, properly seconded. Any other discussion? And Council Member Stiles has requested that everybody voting in the affirmative be listed as a prime sponsor. Is that correct? Yes, thank you. Any objection to that? Seeing none, we're on RS 2020-581 as amended. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Resolution as amended is adopted. So that completes our um, resolutions. We do have a late filed resolution by Council Member Toombs. It's in your packet. Um, Council Member Toombs, um, this was in the uh, amendment packet. It's a resolution approving amendment number two to the solid waste collection services contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County acting by and through the Department of Public Works and Red River Waste Solutions, LP, for a change in weekly collection schedule, liquidated damages, and performance bond requirements. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized at podium number one. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Vice Mayor. Do I need to move to suspend the rules before committee reports? Yeah, it's because it was late filed. It has to come, um, it has to be, uh, you've got to move to suspend the rules. Okay. So council. Yeah, Council Member Toombs has moved to, sus to suspend the rules. It went to the Rules Committee. I'm going to go back to uh, Council Member Johnston, Rules Committee. Did, that take that, did they take this one up? Thank you, Vice Mayor. We did, and we did find that it um, was an emergency, and so we did not object to suspension of the rules. All right, thank you, Council Member Johnston. Back to you, Council Member Toombs. Committee report. All right, uh, let's get, um, should we go ahead and get the suspension taken care of, and then we'll get committee report. Okay. Um, so Council Member Toombs has moved to suspend the rules to get this um, late filed um, resolution before the Council. Um, any objection to it being um, to suspension of the rules? 
Seeing none, Council Member Toombs, um, rules are suspended. You're on your resolution and you want committee reports, correct? Yes. I believe it went to two committees, Public Works and Budget and Finance. Public Works, I see Council Member Nash standing at podium number six. You're recognized. Public Works uh, urges approval, uh, eight in favor, zero against. All right, thanks Council Member Nash. Back to you, Council Member Toombs. Budget and Finance recommended approval, seven, four, zero against. And um, you need a motion to approve the resolution. Move to approve. Okay, so Council Member uh, Toombs has moved to approve the resolution, properly seconded. Discussion on the resolution, do you need to explain what it does? I'd ask Director Cooper to explain what Mr. it does. Mr. Cooper? You recognize for an explanation of the amendment itself a an explanation of what the the um, actually the the resolution yes. does this so it, yeah. as council members are aware there's been a um, um, some issues with Red River over the uh, past year or two uh, especially regarding missed um, pickups at houses and and other some other performance issues and so since the council um, uh, passed a resolution uh, maybe six weeks ago, two months ago, I can't remember exactly, uh, about this issue and requesting that Public Works and the, the law department um, try and negotiate a, a better agreement for the citizens. And um, Public Works and the law department did that. They negotiated uh, this amendment, which takes Red River from four days to five days a week pickup, uh, which is something that both Red River and Public Works think will uh, greatly improve the performance. It also um, includes a dramatic increase in the amount of the performance bond that um, Red River has to uh, pick up, and it makes some changes to the liquidated damages provision. Uh, those are the, the primary, it makes some other tweaks to the definition of uncontrollable circumstances and, and some other technical language, but th those are the primary changes in the agreement. All right, you've heard an explanation of the um, <clears throat> light filed uh, resolution. Um, again, Council Member Toombs has moved for approval, properly seconded. I've got Council Member Johnston in the queue. Council Member Johnston, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Um, this is an issue that we've been dealing with countywide. I know every council member has dealt with it, and we, as, we in South slash Southeast have dealt with it, I think maybe even more. So I just wanted, uh, if, if I can get the clerk to add my name as a co-sponsor, that, um, that would be great. All right, uh, so uh, Council Member Johnston, I think you'll just need to come up and um, sign the resolution, is that right? Okay, you'll take care of it. Okay. So you don't even have to come Thank up you. and sign. She'll just add your name to it. Thanks. Thank you, and thanks so much for all the work that Public Works has done. They've really gone above and beyond. All right. Thank you. And um, Council Member Syracuse, I believe you were the one who had the resolution on this thing. All right. So thank you all for your work. We are on a late file resolution. Again, it was the rules were suspended to get it in front of us tonight. Uh, Council Member Toombs has moved for approval. Um, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Okay. Got it. All right. That should take us through a resolution. So we are now on bills on introduction and first reading. Um, we usually take all these things together and considered um, together. Does anything need to be bumped off of bills on introduction and first reading? So it's my understanding, I believe, Councilmember Hurt, BL 2020-464, item 81. Uh, has an amendment. Does that need to be bumped? Okay. Um, so that's item 81 needs to be bumped off the consent calendar. And um, there's one more. This is item number 104 by Council Member Hauser. There she is. Hold on. Council Member Hauser, you're at uh, podium number six. You're recognized. Yes, uh, I'd like to pull 2020-487 uh, from the consent, please. Okay, so that'll be bumped as well. Anything else? Anything else that needs to be bumped? All right, so everything else can be taken up except for those two bills. It is, uh, let me make sure you remember, BL 2020-464, that's item number 81, and um, the uh, item number 104, BL 2024-87 by Councilmember Hauser. Those are the two bills that will be bumped off the
consent calendar on bills on introduction and first reading. Um, if there is no objection, we will consider everything else on first reading in one vote. Can I have a motion to adopt? I see a motion on our a second. Um, any uh, questions, any uh, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of bills on first reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Um, so uh, bills on re uh, introduction to first reading pass, and then we'll bring up the other two that were taken off separately. We're now on Councilmember Hertz bill. This is item number 81, bill 202464. Uh, against Councilmember Hurt, O'Connell, and Nashville, the sponsors ordinance to amend the GIS system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government by changing the name of 10th Circle North from Rosa L. Parks Boulevard to Dr. Martin L. L. King Jr. Boulevard. That's the distance to the Reverend Kelly M. Smith Circle. So, Councilmember Hurt, you're at podium number four. You are recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. <coughs> I uh, want to suspend the rules, please. And as for amendment. Okay. So you don't need to necessarily suspend the rules. You've got an amendment to take up, okay, correct? Okay, yes. The amendment is to change it from circle to way. Okay. So Councilmember Hurt, uh, this bill is on first reading. She wants to get the amendment on and then uh, move it on. Right. So um, Councilmember Hurt is moving an amendment to change the name circle to way. That's what the amendment does. That's correct. Okay. So Councilmember Hurt has moved the amendment properly. Seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, ready to vote on the amendment. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment passes. Councilmember Hurt, you are now on Bill 2020-64 as amended. Yes, thank okay. you very much, uh, Vice Mayor. I just want to say that um, the First Baptist Church Capitol Hill, where Reverend Dr. Kelly Miller-Smith uh, served as pastor for many years, will be actually celebrating if he were still alive, his 100th birthday. And the church, which his son now pastors and his uh, family would like to honor him in this way. Considering um, that it is a, a short block and it is, uh, the church is on that block and a couple of parking lots that they also own. And there's one other business that's there that, um, this is a, a, a wonderful way to celebrate the work that he did. He was a civil rights movement uh, a leader. He did wonderful things, a graduate of Vanderbilt, taught over there, part of American Baptist College, just a, um, an extensive uh, curricula vita of the things that he did here in Nashville, a very beloved um, and celebrated human being, and there's no better way to recognize him than to name this street after him. And considering that it is going to uh, coincide with Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King Boulevard, along with um, Representative John uh, R. Lewis mm -hmm. that was coming up, you know, in this time, I think it's a, a great thing for the city to embrace um, the history that has been made by these uh, wonderful African-American men. All right. So I, I move for approval. All right, so Councilmember Hurt has moved for approval of Bill 2020-464 as amended on first reading. Um, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Again, we're on first reading. We just got the amendment on. Seeing nobody else in the queue. All those in favor of 2024-64 is amended. Say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, your bill, 2024-64, is amended. Passes on first reading. Thank you again for cleaning that microphone. Thank you. And Councilmember Hurt, while you're up there, I had one other question, uh, and this is a moment of personal privilege for me. Um, when you're talking about all these important people, I, I checked on Pastor Fuss's condition today. Uh, he is recovering from cancer. Yes. Um, and it's my understanding that his doctor has told him that he has to stay inside for a while and not go out. And so um, I told him that he needed to listen to his doctor, and I would ask you to tell him to do the exact same thing. All right? Exactly, because when he gets out, he shows out. You know, he just doesn't yeah. know how to stop talking. 
and go back home. Well, Council Member okay. Hurt, he has never learned how to stop talking. <laughs> he just needs to learn how to talk from inside his house. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Hurt. Uh, we're now on um, now on Council Member uh, Hauser's bill. This is item number 104, Bill 202487. Uh, this is on page 35 of your agenda, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from R15 to SP zoning for property located at 7335 Old Charlotte Pike, approximately 800 feet east of Old Hickory Boulevard. It's 2.21 acres. Council Member Hauser has moved to a further One. two, three, uh, to a further podium. You're at podium number six. You're recognized on your bill, Bill 202487. Thank you. Uh, there is a companion bill that needs to go with this, so I'm asking that we pass it on first reading and then defer it to December 1st so the two bills can be moved through together. All right, so your request is to move to pass tonight and then move second reading to... December, the, 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 the first meeting the in first December. first meeting in December, okay. Yes, sir. All right, so that's the motion. Uh, pass tonight and move second reading to the first meeting in December, properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion is adopted. Thank you, Council Member Hauser. I believe that takes us through the end of the bills on first reading. All right, now we're on bills on second reading. We're on page 37 of your agenda. Um, we're on item number 108. Uh, the first one up is BL 2020-195. This is by Council Member Sepulveda. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from R6 to SV zoning on property located at 4306 Goins Road, the northwest corner of Goins Road and Taylor Road, it's 6.06 .06 acres. Council Member Sepulveda is way in the back at podium number 10. I can see her back there. You're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, move uh, to defer until the first meeting in November. All right, so Council Member Sepulveda has moved to defer this to the first meeting in November. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion to defer? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no. Bill is deferred to the first meeting in uh, November. Thank you, Council Member Sepulveda. Uh, we're now on uh, item number 109. This is substitute bill 2020 224 by Council Member Taylor, Hauser, uh, Suara, and Toombs. Uh, this is an ordinance amending Chapter 11.22 of the Metropolitan Code to require landlords to provide notice to tenants prior to the sale uh, of property. Council Member Taylor, you're recognized at podium number six. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee reports. <laughs> All right. So um, I've got um, planning and zoning, I believe. Council Member Murphy is at podium number nine. You recognized? Thank you. Uh, we planning zoning and historical voted on amendment one, 14 in favor, zero against. Amendment two, 12 in favor, I'm sorry, two in favor, 12 against. Amendment three, eight in favor, seven against. Um, the second substitute was withdrawn and we moved the final bill amended with amendment one and amendment three 14 in favor, zero against, one abstention. All right, thank you, Council Member Murphy. Affordable housing, uh, there is Council Member Sawara. She's at podium number four. You're recognized. Thank you. Affordable housing voted on amendment one, 10 in favor, zero against. On amendment two, one in favor, nine against. On number three, we voted one in favor, nine against. And we voted on the bill as amended with just amendment one only being recommended, 10 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member Sawara. Okay, Council Member Taylor, you're back on um, your bill. Thank you. I would like to move amendment one on All this right. bill. So we are on substitute bill, BL 2020 224. Council Member Taylor has moved amendment number one properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Taylor, for an explanation of the amendment. Thank you, yes. So currently the bill is written as, as of now, 90 days, uh, written notice to a residential tenant. Uh, this bill will lower that to 30 days uh, to a residential tenant. Uh, as well, the section will not apply to uh, rentals, uh, units with 100 or more rentals. 
as well as not apply to the rental agreement addresses required for the rental agreement to address the required notice in the lease. Um, and then also currently as of now, uh, this will not take effect uh, for those leases until January 1st, 2021. And then also uh, section B uh, mirrors some of the uh, language in the state code uh, because it's been uh, referenced to uh, several times within the, the, the process of the uh, deliberation of this bill. All right, so Council Member Taylor has explained uh, the amendment. Uh, he's moved amendment number one, again, properly second, seconded. Ex uh, any um, discussion on amendment number one? The motion is to approve amendment number one. Councilmember Murphy, do you want, wish to speak on amendment number one? Okay, hold on just a second. Councilmember Murphy is at um, podium number nine. Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. I just have a few quick comments and, and questions for the sponsor. When we discussed this yesterday, there was some discussion about the unit count and potentially an amendment on this bill. Um, my concern is, is that when we are basically choosing who this applies to and who it doesn't apply to, we are implying that smaller um, mom and pop landlords are bad actors um, and that corporations are not bad <clears throat> actors by making this only apply to the smaller, um, the smaller landlords. And so I have concern about that staying in the bill. There was discussion about that being taken out last night. And then also I have some concerns about the enactment date. We are less than um, three months until this would be enacted, and I have concerns about the notice of that to landlords and tenants, um, both knowing what is what is the law, what it, what is allowed and is not allowed, and whether that is enough notice for both parties to be aware of it. And while there was another amendment changing the enactment date that was significantly longer, um, I'm not sure that was the right number, but I do have concerns about this taking effect January 1st. And so if the sponsor could speak to that, that would be great. Council Member Taylor. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, uh, we had great conversation in regards to the number of units and looking into that. Um, and so I've been willing to uh, have some more uh, deliberation and conversation with council members in that regard and possibly uh, introducing an amendment to also uh, uh, to uh, uh, answer that concern as well as the concern of the start date in all fairness to give uh, some of these organizations and, and companies some time to, uh, to move about um, as we uh, move toward this uh, bill uh, being approved. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Taylor. Councilmember Murphy. I'd, um, if I could get clarification from the staff, this is not considered a zoning bill and would need a rule suspension on third reading to be amended. Uh, Mr. Cooper. That's correct. It would require suspension of the rules. All right. I think what I'm, I'm hearing from the sponsor is that his intent is to work on the unit count and the enactment date. And I think that if we put this amendment on and move it forward tonight with the reliance of a third reading rule suspension, it's a little um, disingenuous being confusing to the public of whether we are moving forward and that leases need to start being drafted up for the next couple of months uh, in preparation for January 1st. And I think a deferral would be more appropriate tonight. Um, with that, I won't be able to support the bill without a deferral tonight. Okay, thank you, Council Member Murphy. Um, back to you, Council Member Taylor. Yeah, great, thank you so much. So again, I would like to renew my motion to add this amendment. All right, I've got Councilmember Hager in the queue. Councilmember Hager, you're recognized at podium number five. Can, can I ask the sponsor basically what penalty is there if these people don't comply with these amendments in this bill? Because, you know, we have the Landlord Tenant Act that is for Davidson County, and I'm not sure what penalties would be if somebody didn't comply with this. So may I ask that question, please? Uh, is that to the sponsor? Council Member Taylor. Thank you. So um, the landlord tenant is for the state of Tennessee, uh, not for Davidson County, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, so this is this will be, will be uh, only in Davidson County for my understanding, uh, but the landlord tenant is for um, all, uh, um, all landlords throughout the state of Tennessee. Um, but 
but with that, the penalty, from my understanding, and I'll ask Mr. Cooper to help me with this, uh, but from my understanding that it's a $50 day period for that, for that time that they did not notice the tenant. Mr. Cooper? Mr. Cooper? Well, it would, it would be up to the court to determine. Um, it is a $50 fine. Um, the court would determine whether that was applied on a per day, uh, per violation basis or not. But um, we are limited to a $50 fine under the Tennessee Constitution. Councilmember Hager, back to you. Can I ask Mr. Cooper how this conflicts with the Landlord Tenant Act here in Davidson County? Yes or no? Mr. Cooper? As written, it, it doesn't conflict with it because it addresses a couple of little areas that the Landlord and Tenant Act doesn't specifically address. Um, there's always an argument um, that, uh, you know, there's a, a field preemption where the Landlord and Tenant Act intended to preempt the field from local regulation, um, but there's nothing, it, it is not, as written, is not contrary to the language in the Landlord and Tenant Act. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Hager. All right, I've got other people in the queue. Councilmember Johnston is at podium number three. You're recognized. Thank you so much. I had a couple of amendments as well, um, and I, I know we're on, on Councilman Taylor's amendment. Um, I think there, I, I think we've moved forward with this, and I think that we're close, and, and obviously um, Councilman Taylor is willing to compromise and work with some of these objections that, that we have. Um, I think that the more prudent way to move forward would be to defer for at least one meeting so that we can get come together and, and, and make this clean this up and move forward in the proper way. Um, also, it, it would require a suspension of the rules, which in my opinion is not an emergency, so I personally would object to it. So again, I'm, I, I think the more prudent way to, to move forward is to defer so that we can um, come together, clean this up, um, and, and handle it that way. Councilmember Johnson, I'm just clarifying, you're not moving to defer. Can, well, I think he's already got a motion on the floor, but otherwise I would move to defer. So a motion to defer overrides any other motion. I move to defer. All right. So um, Councilmember uh, Johnston has moved to defer how long? Um, two meetings. Councilmember Johnston has moved to defer two meetings, properly seconded. So now we're on a, a motion to defer two meetings. Uh, discussion on the motion to defer to meeting. Yes. Okay, I'm going to go to Council Member Taylor first. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. So, um, to, to be honest, I would love to get this amendment on uh, today and then add uh, other amendments to uh, rectify the, the concerns that we do have. Um, and I am willing to, again, add Amendment 1 to 224. Uh, and I would ask for a deferral for one meeting uh, to, to add the changes that we would need to add. Okay, right now, uh, let me tell you where we are. The Councilman the, uh, Council Johnson's motion to defer two meetings overrides anything going on, so we have to take nope. up that motion to defer first. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I understand okay. that, uh, but this is, this is my argument. I would like uh, to ask the body not to defer this tonight, um, as is right now, but to add the amendment and then we can defer. All right, I'm gonna to go to Council Member Allen. Uh, you're recognized. Thank you. I would just like a clarification. Pr procedurally, can we defeat this current motion to defer, add the amendment, and then make another motion to defer? Is that procedurally possible? Um, Mr. Cooper, I believe uh, it is. As long uh, as it's not another motion to defer two meetings. If so it's like, to defer to another time, then that's... Then we can do that. Yes. I would stand in support of that, and I think I think the, the council members worked hard on this amendment one, and, and has expressed a, a, a willingness to work on that um, with his deferral. And I would I would um, ask to defeat this deferral, knowing that there's another one coming. Thank you. All right, thank you. I've got council member Sawar. Do, do you wish to be heard? Uh, we'll do motion to defer. <laughs> okay, uh, council member Gamble, you recognized? There you are. Yes. Okay, at uh, podium number. Hold on. Thank. I think it's on. Is it on? Yes, it is on. Yes. Okay, Thank you, good. Vice Mayor. I just wanted to concur with Councilwoman Allen that uh, I think it is uh, appropriate for us to um, not uh, approve a, a deferral, two-meeting deferral tonight, and to 
get the amendment on. The sponsor has already stated that he intends to defer to add other amendments that were discussed uh, in committee. So I would definitely support uh, not deferring to meetings, letting him get the amendment on, and then a motion to defer. And I would ask that the my colleagues do the same. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member Campbell. So I've got, I believe I've gotten everybody in on the discussion. Anybody I'm missing to speak? Let me go to Council Member Murphy, and then I'll go to Council Member Johnson. Council Member Murphy, you recognize. Thank you. Um, the, the sponsor has indicated that he is willing to um, compromise and work on two parts of this Amendment 1, one being the enactment date and one being the unit count. And so it really, if we are talking um, about cleaning this bill up and having a bill that moves forward that is good legislation, it really doesn't make sense to put an amendment on that it, it in my summary, two of the three things this amendment does is going to be compromised and changed and amended at the next meeting. Um, in that case, if we are changing two of the main parts of this amendment, then we should not put it on tonight. We should have a clean amendment at the next meeting and, and discuss it then. Otherwise, um, I think this bill at this juncture has been uh, substituted based off of two amendments rolled together for that substitute. We are now talking about amending it tonight with the expectation of amending this amendment that we're putting on. I, I think it would be a lot cleaner and a lot more transparent to the public of our intent and what regulations we're putting on here if, if we slowed down and I think we'd get there faster and everybody would feel more comfortable. So with that, I, I just don't think that we need to put on an amendment that we know we want to change. All right, thank you, Council Member Murphy. I've got Council Member Johnston and then Council Member Sawara. Council Member Johnston, you're recognized. Thank you. I couldn't have said it better um, than Council Lady Murphy. Um, if we're going to be amending the amendment, why put a flawed amendment on it? Let's defer it, let's clean it up, and then move a clean uh, amendment. Um, that's, that's just the responsible and prudent thing to do in, in, in the way to handle legislation when you know that it's already flawed. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Johnston. Councilmember Suara, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, I wanted to say that one of the things that this amendment did, there's a one about changing the days from 90 days to 30 days. The one that is being debated is on the exclusion of units with uh, uh, apartment with more than 100 units. The part about dropping the dates to 30 days is still a very good one. And I say that because that was discussed in affordable housing a couple of weeks back. And I remember getting an email from the Greater Nashville Realtor stating that when they look at the bill, it still has 90 days, that they thought we were going to change it to 30 days. That is a confusion that is already out there. That was something that the uh, sponsor negotiated and talked to all these people that he was going to do. And I think it's better to put that on. And then if we need to take out the 100 units or not take that on, that's a different conversation. So I would respectfully ask that we defeat the defara put on the amendment, and then we'll go from there. Thank you. All right, thank you. Council Member Sawara. Then I'm gonna go back to um, Council Member Taylor. Thank you. So again, I would love to get this amendment on tonight. Um, there's been several conversations with stakeholders uh, about this. Um, the stakeholders that we haven't had a conversation with are the tenants uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, over 50% of, of Nashvilleians in Davidson County members rent here in Nashville. Um, currently right now, the number of homes in stock for rent is under 6%. So we're moving this, we've been working on this, uh, and, 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 and there's been some concerns that were brought up, um, and, and we, we had discussion. Uh, the uh, chairman of the Rules Com Committee said that if we were to uh, invite these changes uh, to be late filed, that it would not consist of an emergency during that meeting, during those committee meetings last night. Therefore, um, we, we have time, um, but nevertheless, we would love to add now this amendment to move forward. The things that we're cleaning up are very minor uh, adjustments. Uh, the, the, the days, that's the largest concern that I've had. Um, we, we all received a letter from the Greater Nashville Realtors Association saying that the amendment as is right now 
will provide them to be in a neutral standpoint. So we, we've received several emails and we've received several thoughts and concerns on this bill and we've been able to work it to be neutral and we're willing, I'm willing to go even further to be in a more understandable way with this bill. Uh, but I ask for you uh, to, to vote the deferral for two meetings down, allow me to add amendment one, defer it, and come back to you next meeting. All right, so um, let me tell you where we are procedurally. Council member Taylor was, um, had moved to put amendment number one on his bill properly, seconded, there was discussion on that. Council member Johnston then moved uh, during that discussion to defer this bill uh, to meetings. That was properly seconded. So what we have before us right now is a motion to defer to meetings. Anybody else wish to speak on the deferral motion? All right, seeing none, uh, we're, we're ready to vote on the deferral motion. We'll try it by voice vote and then we'll see. All, if you're in favor of the deferral motion, you'll vote yes. If you're against the deferral motion, you'll vote no. All those in favor of the deferral motion, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Yeah, it sounded like the no's had it. All right. So um, the, the, the motion to defer fails. Council Member Taylor, you're back on your amendment. Thank you again. I would like to renew my motion to add amendment number one to right. BL 2022-24. So Council Member Taylor has moved amendment number one. Again, it was properly seconded. Any further discussion on amendment number one? Seeing none, we're voting on amendment number one. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Amendment number one passes. We're on uh, your bill now. Um, it's substitute bill 2020-224 as amended. Council member Taylor, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, I would also now like to, uh, to move for a one meeting deferral to right. clean up the bill. All right, so council member Taylor has moved to defer the bill one meeting, properly seconded. Discussion on the deferral motion. Seeing none, we're on the deferral motion. All those in favor of uh, uh, moving substitute bill 2020-224 as amended uh, one meeting, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill is deferred, motion passes. Bill is deferred, one meeting. Thank you, Council Member Taylor. <clears throat> we are now on uh, item number 110. This is on page 38, uh, bill 2020-404. It's an ordinance to amend section 7.24.040 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Regarding alcoholic beverages in open containers, uh, Council Member Porterfield, Benedict Pulley, and Allen are the sponsors. I believe that Council Member Pulley has got this one, and he is at podium number three. Council Member Pulley, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. After uh, working with the administration and the police department, uh, uh, it, it is uh, appears as though the lead sponsor is interested in uh, deferring this indefinitely, so I would make that motion to defer indefinitely. Let me get a committee report first. Uh, Council Member Gamble, public, public Safety. Committee uh, recommended approval of an indefinite deferral, 740 against. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Pulley, you moved to defer indefinitely, is that right? Yes, sir, All I right. did. Thank All you. All right, motion is to defer indefinitely, properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion to defer this one indefinitely? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill is deferred indefinitely. Thank you, Council Member Pulley. We're on item number 11, 111, BL 2020-424. This is an ordinance amending chapter 15.64 of the Metropolitan Code to require additional public notice re regarding applications for stormwater management committee variances. Council Member Murphy, uh, you are recognized at podium number nine. Committee reports, please. Uh, let's see, I've got Public Works, Council Member Nash. Public Works uh, approved a uh, request for deferral for one meeting. All right, thank you, Council Member. Back to you, Council Member Murphy. 
Thank you. Um, I'm going to move to defer this one meeting with a brief explanation that um, I've been working with Stormwater on this one, and I really appreciate their willingness to um, to to work with me on it and figure out the best way to work notice to our constituents into their process. So the amendment that's before that was filed for tonight is to tweak that uh, notice process, the notice days. But yesterday, uh, turns out that we need to change the enactment date just to make sure that it, it works better. And so rather than suspend the rules on third or have a late filed, we're just going to put this off for one meeting. Uh, and so I appreciate y'all's support for a deferral. All right. So Councilmember Murphy has moved to defer uh, 424 one meeting. Again, it was properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, 2020 is deferred one meeting. Motion passes. Uh, we're on item number 112, BL 2020 by Council Member Sawara and Henderson. Ordinance to amend Chapter 2.08 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to, remember, to remove the master list of architects and engineers. Council Member Sawara, you're recognized. Committee reports, please. All right, committee reports. I've got Budget and Finance. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Podium one. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance voted to approve 640 against. All right, back to you, Council Member Sawara. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move for approval with a brief explanation. All right, so I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Back to you. Thank you. Um, this bill will uh, basically remove the current list of architecture and engineers. What we found out over the couple of conversations, even in this chamber last year, is that the list that we have, uh, some of the people on it are very old. Uh, they've been there for a long time. There's no procedure to actually clean it up or as people are added. We also find out that it's not very conducive for minority businesses or people that are not even aware that such a list exists. Unfortunately, when departments want to make uh, uh, purchases or they want to make contracts, some of them look into this list to be able to award contracts, and we believe that that is not uh, ideal. Uh, I did discuss with the procurement department, they are in favor of this uh, bill, and they believe that it is important that at the point where we're making a decision awarding a contract, we should look at the firm and look at what they stand for and make sure that they're in compliance with everything that we want them to be, and that's how we want to choose our contractor, not going through a, a list that is actually old. And so uh, with that, I move for approval. All right, so Council Member Suarez has moved again for approval on second reading of 2024-49, properly seconded to discussion on the bill. Seeing nobody in the queue, we're voting on 2024-49 on second reading. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill passes. Thank you, Council Member Suarez. Uh, come on back up. BL, uh, you're on 113, BL 2020-450 by Council Member Suarez O'Connell and a host of other uh, council members. This is an ordinance to amend the GIS system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government by changing the name of Fifth Avenue North and Opry Place to Representative John Lewis Way North by changing the name of Fifth Avenue South to Representative John Lewis Way South. Council Member Suarez, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. All right, I've got, um, let's see, planning. Council Member Murphy is back at her favorite podium. You recognize. Thank you. I'm just going to move my, my whole table over here. We uh, approve this 12 in favor, zero against, as amended. Okay, and public works. Council Member Nash is now at his favorite podium. You recognize. Public, public works uh, recommended approval, eight in favor, zero against. All right, and traffic. Proudly so. All right, and traffic and parking. I think Council Member Parker has that one, and he is at. There you go. Thank you. Um, traffic and parking voted three in favor, none against. The bill is amended. All right. Thank you, Council Member Parker. Back to you, Council Member Suara. I'd like to move the amendment with an explanation, please. All right. So, Council Member Suara has moved uh, an amendment to 2024-50, properly seconded. Back to you for discussions on your amendment. Thank you. Uh, this bill is the redeeming of Fifth Avenue for uh, Congressman John Lewis. Uh, I want to reiterate, uh, for those who do not know the uh, extent of Congressman uh, John Lewis' relation to Nashville. Uh, he actually got his start in civil rights here, and we have a whole lot of uh, spots on Fifth Avenue that has a connection with the late congressman. 
And so uh, the Minority Caucus, along with a lot of uh, community leaders, have been working to change the, the, the Fifth Avenue North and South to John Lewis Way, and we have a lot of support from businesses and individuals in that area. Uh, the amendment that I'm proposing will change the effective date to 1st of January 2021. Uh, the amendment is necessary for a couple of reasons. Number one, we wanted to make sure that the bill takes effect after all election and that it does not confuse people as to whether they need to change their addresses or not. Uh, John Lewis is very big on uh, voting rights, and so we did not want to tamper with that. The second reason is for the businesses. Uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, businesses are able to change their addresses with the Secretary of State uh, during the annual report, January through April, or also with the IRS with the tax return. And so by changing the effective date, businesses now have from January 2021 to January 2022 uh, to make the change in address. I want to uh, clarify, I think it's very important to, for everyone to know that anytime we do a change in address, people have a whole year to effect that change. And one of the things that we had, we had three Zoom meetings, community meetings, is that for any business that is out there that is impacted, they have a year to use their stationery, use everything that they have before they have to change anything over so it reduces the burden or the cost on them. It's also important to know that they do not have to contact the post office or NES to change their addresses. All of that will be automatically done for them. So with that, I move the amendment. All right, so Council Member Swar has moved the amendment on 2024-50. Again, it was properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? All right, seeing none, we're on your amendment. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Amendment passes. Council Member Swar, you're on your bill, BL 2024-50 as amended. I'd like to move the bill as amended. All right, Council Member Swar has moved the bill as amended. Um, Properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill as amended? This is passage on second reading. Thank you. Seeing nobody in the queue, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill 2024-50 as amended. Passes on second reading. All right, we're on item number 114, BL 2024-51 by council members Pulley, Murphy, and Nash. This is an ordinance amending Bill 2018-1137 with respect to retention of easements and amending the GIS system street and alley center layer by bending alley number 1715 between Crestmore Road and the southern property line of the Calvary Methodist Church. Council, Council Member Pooley is back at podium number three. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice <coughs> Mayor. Committee reports, please. All right, so Council Member Murphy is slowly making it back to her podium. Number nine, you're welcome. You're recognized. Thank you. Planning, zoning, and historical, 12 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilor Nash, you're recognized for public works. Public works voted in favor, eight for, zero against. All right, Council Member Parker, you're recognized for traffic and parking. Thank you. Traffic and parking voted three in favor, none against the bill as amended. All right, uh, so we're back to Council Member Pooley. You're recognized uh, on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I guess I need to move the bill, get it on the floor, and then move an amendment. So right. I move the bill. Uh, why don't you go ahead and move the amendment? Okay. Uh, I'd like to move the amendment with a very brief explanation. Of All right. Amendment. So Councilor Pulley has moved um, an amendment to 2024-51 properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Very briefly, uh, the bill <coughs> itself is an alley abandonment. Uh, uh, it's uh, basically an extension of a bill that was filed in 2018, uh, which will enable us to move an alley from the east side of, to the west side of a parcel to enable... Uh, uh, our intersection realignment. What this amendment does is there's a storm pipe underneath the alley and the uh, public works infrared can't tell whether it's active or inactive. The amendment will uh, allow pu public works to uh, enable, uh, enables public works to force CVS to move the storm pipe if it is active or crush it if it is not. So that's the purpose of the amendment and with that I'd ask your support. So, uh, Councilor Member Pulley moves an amendment to possibly crush a storm pipe. Is huh. that right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, the amendment is properly seconded. Any discussion on that crushing amendment? Seeing nobody in the queue or anywhere else, uh, we're voting on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Opposed, no. 
Amendment passes. Council Member Pulley, you're back on your bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Now I'd move the bill as amended. That's okay. Council Member Pulley now has moved Bill 2024-51 as amended on second reading, properly seconded. Uh, any discussion on the bill as amended, passing it on second reading? Seeing nobody else in the queue, all those in favor of 2024-51 as amended, say aye. Opposed, no. 2024-51 passes uh, on second reading as amended. I'm on item number 115, Bill 2024-52 by Toombs, Murphy, Nash, and Parker, ordinance approving a participation agreement between the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Department of Water and Sewer Services and Highview Flats, LLC, authorizing the Director of Public Property or designated to transfer to Highview Flats, LLC, via quick claim D, a small portion of certain parcel property located at 700 East Trinity Lane. Council Member Toombs is at podium number one. You're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports. All right, planning and zoning. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. 12 in favor, zero against. All right, Council Member Nash, you're recognized at your podium. Public works voted in favor, seven, four, zero against. All right, back to you, Council Member Toombs. Budget and finance voted to recommend approval, 740 again. All right, and what do you want to do with your bill? Move for approval. Council Member Toombs has moved for approval on 2024-52, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, we're on 2024-52 on second reading. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill 2024-52 passes on second reading. <coughs> Uh, item number 116, Bill 2024-53 by Council Member Roberts, Murphy, and Nash. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept a public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manhole and easements for property located at 5800 Centennial Boulevard. Council Member Roberts. Vice you Mayor. You recognize. Committee reports, please. All right, so I've got planning and zoning. Council Member Murphy, you recognize. 12 in favor, zero against. All right, and Council Member Nash is going to try to push Council Member Roberts out of the way so he can get his microphone Public back. Public Works voted in favor, uh, 8 4, zero against. All right, Council Member Roberts, you're recognized on your bill. I'd like to move for approval, please. Council Member Roberts moves for approval on BL 2024 53 on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you. <clears throat> that brings us to bills on third reading, and we actually have a third reading ordinance consent agenda. So let me go through those real quick. Uh, that's going to take care of most of the bills on third reading. These are the bills on third reading. Just stay with me, and then if something needs to be knocked off, let me know. Um, items on the consent agenda, starting on page 42, it's item number 121. BL 2024, 23, 425, 426, 427, 428, 429, 430, 431, 432, 433, and 434. So basically starting on page 42, 121, all the way through the end of the calendar, all those bills are on third reading consent. <clears throat> Anything that needs to be bumped off? All right, seeing none, uh, these are the bills on uh, Council Member Van Rees, you're recognized at um, podium number one. Uh, yes, I'd like to pull 425 for mm -hmm. discussion. <coughs> All right. Council Member Allen, that's it? Okay. Council Member Suara, you recognize. Council Member Suarez has moved 423. Okay. So items 121 and 122 are pulled off of consent. Anything else? All right, so, um, so the first two bills are put and pulled off, so we'll start with item number 123, Bill 2020 426. I'm going to read you the captions of the bills. Um, 2020-426 by Tombs, Ledge, and others, an ordinance establishing a program for the purpose of providing assistance to low-income elderly residents in the Metropolitan Government for the fiscal year 2021. 2024-27 uh, by Roberts, Murphy, and Nash. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing easement rights for five properties located at 4427 Michigan Avenue. 2024-28 by Tombs, Murphy, and Nash. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to negotiate and accept permanent temporary easements 
for the 14th Avenue North stormwater improvement project for six properties located on 14th Avenue North and Middle Street. Uh, item number 126, bill 2024-29, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to negotiate and accept permanent and temporary easements for the Pennington Avenue stormwater improvement project for eight properties located on Pennington Avenue and Burns Street. That's Benedict, Murphy, and Nash. Item number 127 by O'Connell, Murphy, and Nash. 2024-30, an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing water main fire hydrant assemblies and easements to re relocate existing water mains and to accept new water mains uh, at 1419 Roselle Parks Boulevard. 128, item number 128, BL 32431 by Taylor Murphy and Nash. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon an existing public water main and easements and to accept a new public water main fire hydrants and easements for property located at 640 21st Avenue North. Uh, item number 129, BL 32432 by Pulley Murphy and Nash. Or ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon an existing water mains fire hydrant assemblies and easements and to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies and sanitary sewer manholes at property located 1120 Glendale Lane. Uh, item number 130, BL 2024-33, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept public sanitary sewer mains, manholes and easements for six properties located on Young's Lane and West Trinity Lane. And, and that's by Toombs, Murphy and Nash. And the last item, 131 by Benedict Murphy and Nash, BL 2024-34, Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing sanitary sewer easement rights for property located at 4810 Gallatin Pike. Those are all the items on the consent calendar. It's my understanding that all the community reports are in on those bills. So um, I'm going to go to Council Member Murphy uh, to ask for a motion to approve all those bills on the consent calendar. And she goes to her favorite podium. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Move to approve. Councilmember Murphy has moved to approve all those items on the consent agenda, properly seconded. Any discussion? Councilmember Allen on anything? Councilmember Van Rees? Any items on, on the consent calendar? Any discussion on items on the consent calendar? No? No. Okay. All right. So we're voting on the consent calendar. All those in favor of all those bills passing on third reading on the consent agenda? Uh, indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. Those bills all pass on third reading. Okay, so now we're back to the bills that are still on third reading that were not on the consent agenda. <coughs> so we're back on item 117 by Council Member Murphy. This is Bill 2020-223 as amended. Uh, Councilor Aaron Murphy is the sponsor. Ordinance amending section 7.16.110 of the Metropolitan Code to provide a mechanism for retail liquor establishments to obtain an exemption from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a certificate of compliance upon approval of the met by the uh, Metropolitan Council by resolution. Council Member Murphy, you are at your podium. You're recognized. Thank you. We actually took care of my intent for this bill in another piece of legislation earlier this summer. And so with that, I'd like to move to withdraw. All right. So Councilor Murphy has moved to withdraw properly. Seconded. Any discussion on the withdrawal motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the withdrawal motion say aye. Opposed, no. Um, BL 2020, 223 as amended is withdrawn. Uh, we're now on item 118. This is by Council Member O'Connell and Murphy, uh, BL 2024, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from IR to OG zoning for properties located at 309, 401, and 407 Driftwood Street west of the terminus of Nestor Street is 9.39 acres. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. I'd like to defer to the second meeting in October. All right. So I think we have a committee report? Oh, I'm sorry. I do have a committee report. Uh -huh. um, it is 12 in favor, zero against, to defer this to the second meeting in October, and I renew my motion. All right. So Council Member Murphy renews her motion to defer to the second meeting in October, so it's defer one meeting. Um, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the bill is deferred one meeting to the next meeting in October. We're now on uh, item number 119, BL 202385. Uh, this is by Council Member Roten and Murphy. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code by applying a neighborhood landmark overlay district for property located at 3611 and Pike 
at the southwest corner of Danny at Crest Drive and Lebanon Pike. I think I said that wrong. Um, Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized on the bill. Thank you. I would like a committee report, and the committee report is from Planning, Zoning, and Historical. Twelve in favor, zero against. To defer this to the first meeting in December. All right. So um, you've heard the motion. It's to defer to the first meeting in December. Properly seconded. Any discussion about the motion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion to defer to the first meeting in December, say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Thank you, Councilmember Murphy. We're on item number 120 by BL, it's BL 2020-422. Ordinance amending Metropolitan Code section 1.24.030 to permit the mayor to enlist Metropolitan employees outside of the Health Department and the Metropolitan National Police Department to issue citations to enforce emergency health orders. This is by Council Members Mendes, Pulley, and Hurt, and others. Council Member Mendes, you are recognized at podium number one. I believe um, all the committee reports are in, but I, I also think there's an amendment uh, by Councilmember Pulley. That all right, so Councilmember Pulley, you're recognized at um, podium number three. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I believe I'm going to have to uh, ask to suspend the rules in order to get the amendment on as it is third reading. So I would ask to suspend the rules. All right, so Councilmember Pulley has moved to suspend the rules to bring forth a, an amendment to get it on on um, third reading. Did this go through the Rules Committee? Did not go through the Rules Committee. So it's a, uh, did it need to go? So it's a, was it late? I believe the amendment was filed timely. It's just a third reading amendment. That's why it didn't go to the rules. All right, thank you, Councilmember Pulley. So Councilmember Pulley is um, attempting to suspend the rules to get an amendment um, on this bill because it's on third reading, correct? That's correct. Uh, so uh, is there an objection to suspension of the rules to consider the amendment on third reading? Councilmember Pulley has again moved to suspend the rules. Any objections? All right, seeing none, Councilmember Pulley, the rules are suspended. You are on your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The original ordinance would allow Metro employees outside the Health Department and the Police Department to be enlisted to assist, to assist with the uh, enforcement of emergency health orders, including the issuance of citations, uh, but only during the declared states of emergency and upon a written order from the mayor. Uh, so uh, some council members uh, requested a friendly amendment to clarify that the new authority would only apply to Metro employees who already have existing authority under the Metro code to issue those ci citations. So what this clarifies that uh, the department employees who currently have that citation authority would include the following, which are traffic and parking officers, animal care and control officers, codes inspectors, alarm inspectors, beer board inspectors, fire marshal, water service inspectors, and public works inspectors who all have that authority as a part of their current positions. So uh, that's what the amendment clarifies. And with that explanation, I would ask uh, your approval of the amendment. All right, so you've heard the explanation. So Council Member Pulley has moved his amendment, again, properly seconded. Um, questions on the amendment? Seeing nobody in the queue. We're voting on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment passes. Councilmember Pulley's amendment is on. So uh, we're back on the bill now as amended. It's BL 2024 22 as amended. Councilmember Mendes, you're uh, recognized at podium number one. I'd like to move the bill as amended for approval on third reading. Okay, so Councilmember Mendes has moved the bill for approval um, as amended. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of the bill as amended on third reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes. Bill 2020 422 as amended passes on third reading. Thank you, Councilmember Mendes and Pulley. Uh, we're now on uh, item number 121. This is Bill 2020 423. It's on page 42. Councilmember Sawara and Henderson, ordinance to amend section seven, uh, excuse me, section 4.36.020 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws regarding suspension or debarment. Councilmember Sawara, you are recognized 
on the bill. Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor, I'm going to make it very. Um, Council Member Suara, go ahead. You're recognized. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, all committee reports are in, but before I move for uh, approval, I just want to make a brief comments, and I'll make it very brief so we can go home. All right, so Council Member uh, Suara has moved BL 2024 23 um, for passage on third, third reading, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation on the amendment. Thank I mean, you. Oh, excuse me, on the bill. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this bill is one of, in a series of bills that is looking at the procurement code. Uh, this, with the architect list and some other ones that will be coming up, is just a way to just tighten up some of the things that we do. But I wanted to acknowledge that there were people that were working on it before I got on council, uh, council member Anderson, uh, Virtue, and a whole lot of people that have been looking at the procurement bill. And I know that there was a, a whole list of people this year, two Nash, Jones, Van Rees, everybody's trying to look at ways to make things better. So this bill is the first one, and what this one does is that it allows us to have a public suspension and debarment list so that if somebody has done something, they're not following the rules or not doing the contract the way they're supposed to do it, we have a public list that people can look at and make sure that we're not doing business with bad actors. And so there will be some other more that will be coming later, but this is the first one. And with that, I move for approval, and thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member Sawara. So she has moved for approval of BL 2024-23 on third reading. Again, it was properly seconded. Any other discussion on the bill? Seeing no one else, uh, all those in favor of 2024-23 for passage on third reading indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on third reading. Uh, this is the last bill of tonight. BL, one, um, it's BL 2024-25. It's item number 122. Councilmember Rosenberg is the sponsor and ordinance to chapter 16.24 of the Metromon Code to restrict the amount of fill material that can be placed upon property in close proximity to a river. Councilmember Rosenberg, you're recognized, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so this is a pretty straightforward bill. I know there have been some dubious claims made by some lobbyists today in an attempt to muddy the waters. Um, they would tell you that it's to target a specific property where they want to send 185,000 dump trucks uh, to an empty quarry over the next five years adjacent to a neighborhood. Um, and I'm sure they do want to do that. They would make a serious amount of money on the tipping fees and then they would get to develop on top of it. And I guess that's why they were able to hire these really expensive lobbyists. The truth is that this property is not going to be subject to this bill because that property is subject to the Jackson law. Uh, it's a landfill and the council would have to approve it. So they're actually not impacted by this. Um, so I would just like to clear up those uh, misconceptions. Uh, the reality is that this is a widespread issue. I have 27.9 miles of riverbank in my district alone. Uh, and there are a lot of um, issues related to this. There's uh, the Harpeth River uh, supplies water to Dixon and Cheatham counties. Uh, it's, a, it's covered under the Tennessee Scenic Rivers Act. And due to uh, the nature of state law, water quality, uh, you know, our grading permits don't really impact a lot of agricultural properties along the river um, due to a statewide agricultural exemption. This allows us to have an eye on, on what's happening and what's going to be going to our river when grading happens that's not subject to a local permit that then drives additional runoff of unknown fill into our rivers. Um, it, if you're not into water quality, it does also protect property values by ensuring that untoward development is not happening adjacent to existing neighborhoods. Uh, it's important to note that this bill does not prohibit any activity. It merely creates council oversight. It says that water quality will be examined and then by a single reading resolution, we'll have a chance to look at that. Um, and I think that anybody with uh, this kind of thing happening in their district would be very supportive of getting to have an eye on it in the council. Uh, so with that, Mr. President, I move approval and I ask for everybody's support. All right, so Council Member Rosenberg has moved for approval of BL 2024-25 on third reading, properly seconded. Discussion. Council Member Allen, you're at um, uh, Van Rees, I'm sorry, you're at podium number one. Got it. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I, 
I would like um, the sponsor to consider a deferral, not on the merit of the bill, but rather uh, my concern that the planning department has made any sort of opinion on this. And I, I just want to make sure that we get a report. It wasn't, didn't come to the planning committee. Uh, I don't see that the uh, planning staff was able to kind of make sure that how this reacted uh, to all of our riverfront and not just uh, the one that you're most concerned about in, in, in your district. So I, I don't think that I have any problem at all about the merits of the bill, but rather just wanting to make sure that we do our due diligence to make sure that the planning staff so uh, reviews it. So with that, I'm just asking the sponsor to defer uh, two meetings to make that happen. Councilman Rosenberg. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Again, this has nothing to do with that project in my district, which would not need this legislation. Um, beyond that, I'd yield to Councilmember Murphy, who chairs the planning committee. Councilmember Murphy, you're at podium number nine. You're recognized. Thank you. Um, upon reviewing this, the, the argument had been made to me today that this should have gone to the planning commission and through the planning committee here at council. And this is actually in the property standards uh, code is where this legislation is being addressed. And so it is not actually um, a, a zoning issue. It, and this is not a zoning bill. Um, while it is how you use your land, it is not um, a zoning bill. It is just limiting how often you can take trucks and fill materials to the property or from the property. Um, and so it's actually not appropriate to go to the zoning, uh, to the Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee or to the Planning Commission. All right, thank you, Councilmember Murphy. Back to you, Councilmember Rosenberg. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Councilmember Murphy. Uh, that's a great point. We do have a lot of bills that speak to what you can do on your property uh, as far as property standards go, and none of those bills go to the planning uh, department. We actually have a piece of code that says that you can't use mulch for fill, which also did not go to planning. This is just not that kind of a bill. Uh, so my preference would be to pass this in the normal course of business as we typically would this sort of bill. All right, thank you, Councilmember Rosenberg. Okay. Councilmember Withers, you're recognized at uh, podium number five. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I would agree with uh, uh, Councilmember Van Rees. I mean, I, District 6 is bordered by a river on three sides. I have lots of riverfront land. I would like to learn more about this bill. Uh, I think it's, I'm sure the sponsor brought it with great intention. If it doesn't affect one property, that's totally fine. That doesn't negate the logic of wanting to uh, learn more about it and what the side effects potentially are or how it does affect properties. It could be a really great thing. So I just feel like we need to learn more about it as a person who represents a district that is bounded on three sides by the Cumberland River, including industrial land, industrially zoned land. Um, so I would move for a two-meeting deferral. All right, so Councilmember Withers has moved for a two-meeting deferral, properly seconded. Uh, that, uh, so we're now on a motion to defer two meetings. Um, so I've got people in the queue. Councilmember Allen or Councilmember Sledge, do you wish to speak on the deferral motion? And then I'll go back to Councilmember Rosenberg. Councilmember Allen, wish to speak on the deferral motion? I, okay. I believe so, yes. I, I would support that simply because um, from a, just from a water um, standpoint, I would be interested in just uh, the opportunity to ask more questions about um, how this specifically affects water quality by limiting the number of trucks as opposed to what the fill is or um, how that uh, would necessarily be a remedy to a water quality issue. And secondly, um, because this is in Division 16, I would be interested to hear from codes um, just in terms of how that, how that would be monitored by them. So I, I think a two-meeting deferral would be helpful just to continue to get a little bit more information. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Allen. Uh, Councilmember Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this bill uh, went through our committees um, where questions were asked and, and dealt with. Um, I, don't, I know that some last minute uh, water muddying um, appropriately uh, came up today um, and, and I certainly believe that we can have further conversations in the future, but both uh, the Director of Codes and Director of Water have been aware of th this bill from the start, have been part of the conversation, uh, and, and I think that those questions can be uh, answered without 
of putting off a bill that I know my constituents are very interested in seeing passed, and again, only increases council oversight and does not actually prohibit anything from passing uh, or, or prohibit anything from being done in the future. So what I would ask that you vote against the deferral motion. Thank you. Councilmember Nash, you're recognized. I would like to speak in favor of the deferral. Uh, yeah, we have been notified by, by some folks that have raised some interesting questions in regard to how enforceable it is and, and uh, how it might in, uh, be a detriment to some development anywhere along rivers. And we all have rivers in our districts. This is a river city. So I think uh, I would also like to ask that it be brought back to public works so we can have some of those more in-depth discussions if the, uh, if the uh, motion to defer passes. All right, so uh, what we have before us is a motion to defer two meetings. It was properly seconded. Um, any other discussion on the motion to defer? Nobody else in the queue? We're ready to vote on the motion to defer. It's for two meetings. All those in favor of the motion to defer two meetings say aye. aye. Opposed, no? No. Um, on this one, I think because it's on third reading, I think I need to take a machine vote. Okay. So, Madam Clerk, um, I'm going to uh, ask you to uh, prepare. Uh, so, what we're voting on is a motion to defer two meetings. That's what you're voting on. Madam Clerk, just tell me when you're ready. I'm ready, Vice Mayor. All right. So again, if you want to defer the bill two meetings, you would vote aye. If you uh, are against the deferral motion, you would vote no. Madam Clerk, open up the machines. Madam Clerk, just tell me when all the votes are in. Yes, sir. All the votes are in. Uh, uh, Madam no. Clerk, close the machines, take the vote. I'm sorry, Vice Mayor. Um, I was indicating that I would let you know. Oh, okay, and, sorry. Uh, may I ask um, some council members if they would like to choose to vote? Uh, you certainly can to make sure we get everybody in. Go ahead. Thank you. Council Member Hancock, do you choose to vote on this motion? Okay, so hold on, Councilmember Hancock, we're working on her machine. Yes, uh, um, would you please re report your vote to me and I'll record it from here. Councilmember Hancock, um, the vote is yes on the deferral motion. Councilmember Han Council Hancock votes yes on the deferral motion. Okay, anybody else? Checking very quickly, Vice Mayor. Um, and Councilman Rosenberg, did you choose to vote on this motion? All right, um, all votes are in, Vice Mayor. All right, uh, Madam Clerk, close machines, take the vote. So it looks like, but, oh, this is interesting. So whoop, then it went away on my screen. I actually saw the vote. Can you, uh, can you tell me what the vote was? I certainly will. Okay. There are, sorry, Vice Mayor, I had, to, I had to find it. There were 17 votes in favor and 12 against. All right, so the motion passes 17 in favor, 12 against. So the bill is deferred two meetings, all right? Um, Mr. Cooper, I believe that's it. That is it. It is a 10.09. Congratulations. Um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. And a motion to adjourn properly seconded. All in favor of the adjournment motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. We stand adjourned. Thank you. And I will tell you we will be back in the Music City Center at the next meeting. You need that one. 
And so the council has concluded about a three and a half hour, three hour and 40 minute meeting uh, in its new home, at least temporarily, at the Music City Center in the Davidson Room. Uh, that would be a very short meeting by standards of the council that's operating under emergency rules. This is the first time it has rescinded those emergency rules and has enough room here at the Music City Center to do all the things they need to do for social distancing, wear masks, and conduct its business. I think it's fair to say that this meeting would have been a lot longer with a 39-page agenda, even with the new format, than what it has been for this. Uh, for the most part, the, the council went through that 39-page agenda with mostly routine uh, bills that were before it. Um, one thing that sort of is a little bit of a cloud over the meeting tonight, at least five members were not able to be here tonight because of uh, COVID uh, virus issues. Three members are in quarantine right now, have been exposed to the virus, and two are recovering or have the virus, and so they were not here tonight. Others were perhaps out because of the, uh, the fall break that's going on. So the council got down for most of the night to just above 30 members. They need 27 members in order to conduct business. Among actions the council did take tonight, they did approve uh, $32.1 million from the city's uh, virus federal CARES Act money that, that the city has uh, uh, to spend. Most of that went for various uh, things doing involved with the virus uh, things they're doing, including staffing and temporary labor. That was $24.8 million. Hazardous pay for critical infrastructure employees, $20 million. Lab test costs, $11.9 million. PPE and other safety supplies, $7.7 million. Some interest costs, $2.6 million. Technology and remote work, about $1.5 million. And some other at-risk planning and communications for the health department, $1.4 million. There's several other res resolutions pending before the council that would like to spend some of the uh, CARES Act money, but uh, they have not gone through the city's CARES Act committee to be recommended to the council, so council members have deferred taking action on those. Uh, I would point out that that money has to be spent uh, under the federal law, at least appropriated and spent by the end of the year, so the time is approaching fairly soon to get all this worked out one way or the other. Council also approved uh, another virus-related bill on third reading, it's Ordinance Bill 2024-22. It states that after a state of emergency is declared, the mayor is authorized in order to appoint uh, employees of the metropolitan government to assist in the enforcement of orders issued by the medical health director, including the issuance of citations. That was pretty broad. In fact, at one point, the bill was drafted. It could be any employee the mayor could in, in basically uh, enlist in doing that. The bill was amended tonight on third reading to narrow that down to traffic and parking, uh, codes inspectors, alarm inspectors, fire, fire marshals, those who are already in the enforcement business and the council approved that and sent it on to the mayor for uh, his signature. Another bill on third reading that was passed tonight is an ordinance that would create an extension and more funding for the existing property tax relief program. All the persons who qualify for the state property tax relief program whose income does not exceed a state mandated cap of $30,700 a year is eligible. This is important and given what happened with the property tax increase being, inc property taxes being increased 34% with the bills now going out of that matter is still before the, uh, the courts. Uh, in terms of repealing it, and um, council had some talk again tonight about more charter amendments, but indefinitely deferred those, so those were basically were killed tonight. But at this point, the, um, the, the extra money for um, property tax relief, the, the funding for the program was increased by the council from 3.9 million to almost 5.2 million. Uh, the vice mayor also tonight announced several uh, extra special committees that will be made up of both council members and the public. Perhaps the most important one is one that would study council reimbursement or council and uh, yeah, what, what the council gets for its reimbursement for being a part of the council. That would seem to be a, uh, a, an effort to, to look again at, uh, at council members and uh, particularly past council members and what they get in terms of being able to continue to get uh, health care. Council had a bill before it, been before it several times before in other council sessions to uh, change uh, the uh, health insurance that's available to former council members. Uh, the council disapproved that or deferred it until March. This might bring that up a little bit, a little bit earlier to have the council take another look at it uh, going forward, uh, or at least have something ready to further discuss about it when it comes back up in March of 21. The council is now in recess until the 20th of October. It'll be here back at the Music City Center in the Davidson Room. It's probably going to be the council's home until the end of the year, perhaps longer if um, the COVID-19 emergency and other things continue. We'll be here at that time to provide live coverage. Until then, good night from the Music City Center. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, 
visit nashville.gov.